Hello, 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 and welcome to Creative Quarantine Springfield Day number 23. Woo! Hoo, 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 hoo. I think we only got, uh, what, one more Saturday in the month? Everybody is cranking and moving and grooving and trying to get their momentum going. Uh, well, I shouldn't say get their momentum going. Keep their momentum going is the operative word. I thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for following us during the week. We have been trying our best to bring you an inside view of how artists do things. I'm sure that if you've been watching the show, you learned a lot. And uh, they're showing, not only are they doing their personal work, but they're also showing you some and sharing some of their techniques, which uh, hopefully will spark you into wanting to do some other things. I know it sparked me. It's got me working with some sculpture and some uh, casting and some leafing and some other stuff. So... And that's what the creative quarantine for is to uh, spark your uh, creativity in other directions that give you a kind of a break from the practice you use every day. So, yes, that's what's up with us. It's a good Saturday and we had a nice sale yesterday. Um, we did very, very well. We sold uh, seven pieces yesterday. So I guess with that being said, I'm going to automatically officially uh, state that we will be having a second sale next Friday. Uh, so if you didn't get a chance to participate in this one, you got another week to prepare to be ready for the next one. And so uh, with that being said, I'm going to get ready to get the party started. Where is my co-pilot? She's running around doing other things other than tech in the day. So we're going to wait. Let's wait for her because she's like that. No microphone, no nothing. That's what I'm talking about. I see it. So Trinity you see what I'm saying. Y'all see what I'm saying. <laughs> this is what I gotta deal with on a daily basis. I'm prepping for the day. Yeah, I got you actually... prepping. You, I got you prepping, but I'm, I'm when I introduce you, you need to be where you need to be. <sighs> All right. 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 right, this is the beginning of the show. This is not you know. you prep. Well, I was, you I was like, you got really? six hours to prep. You're supposed to, I was running around. You should have been like, there oh, she I is. You. I'm just saying. I, greet, greet the guests. I've already greeted them for you. Hi, guys. How are you? I am so excited. This is such a fantastic day. We are on day what? 23. 
uh, creative quarantine, and it is insane. And you know, Poncho, like you said, there's just been so many fun, fun, fun things that we have been doing and trying out and experimenting with and experiencing. I am just really excited. And just like you, you were like, we've been trying so many things and hoping everybody else is kind of tagging along and trying a lot of really cool stuff with us, which we know you are. Um, but this has been, you see my, my, my co-assistant will be with me today. Um, but this has been, I have done so many different things that um, it's just been really exciting and trying new things. Well, I think the thing you are embracing the actual spirit of a quarantine, you know, yes. because while you are doing new things and reimagining new things, we have some people that are stuck on the notion of doing something experimental. It's right. like they feel like they almost have to abandon what they're doing. Exactly. And that's not really what this is. No, it's not. It's actually, um, actually, I, and I don't know if I sent you, but I was doing some LaShawn because, you know, I'm like, always afraid to do LaShawn's because I'm like, hmm, I have to do some more of LaShawn's. And his work for me, for me, is a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, the texture is a challenge. The colors are a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a lot of different challenges. The fact that he uh, has a black background is a challenge because, mm -hmm. you know, Louise is all white background. Exactly. And so those are those were just posing huge challenges for me. So what was really great is uh, taking the time to see what everybody else was doing with mm -hmm. LaShawn's work actually helped me to decide what I was going to do with his work. Yeah, it's kind of freeing. And at some point you realize, well, wait a minute now, why am I intimidated by it? I'm getting a weird echo. Do you hear an echo on your side? I don't, I don't. I turned everything down on okay. mine. So. Yeah, I'm not sure where that echo is coming from. But anyway, okay. uh, it's, a, it's a prime example of what I'm talking about. So I, I'm, I'm glad that this is something that you are exploring as we go along. Yeah, and, and that's and it's just like you said, some people are just not, um, you know, it's like sometimes we get cut, we get caught off, caught up in our own space. It, can I say space or idea ideology? of who we are and what we do. Mm -hmm. And we hold on to that so tightly till we can't explore. And then when somebody says, oh, do something experimental, it doesn't register. It doesn't right. register. Well, everybody's saying they hear the echo. So I'm going to come out and come back in and see if it disappears. Okay, well then I will just keep talking. Hey guys, so I'm gonna be doing something really fun today. Um, and then we will, I'm actually going to be doing some mold casting, but this has been so exciting and the sale, like Pancho said, was fantastic. And so we are so looking forward to you guys for our next sale. You guys have encouraged us so much with this sale that we are literally looking forward to our next sale and adding even more work. I mean, we're still gonna keep it down to an hour because we don't want to saturate everything. So we still will keep it down to an hour and we'll still keep about the same amount of items that we had because like we said, most all of this stuff, a lot of it is going to Art to the Soul Gallery. And so we're just trying to give you guys a little taste before everything goes. So this really is, doing the sale is really giving you guys an opportunity to um, just pick up some of the really cool stuff that has been made during the creative quarantine. So, all right, how is it now? Testing one, two, three. I still hear well, it a I, little bit, but we're going to keep do? it going. Do you no, have anything else open? No, nothing's open. It's just one of those okay. fluky days. I can't complain. It's been 23 days of no flukiness with sound with me. So There you go. So if we got a little flukiness today, we're going to live through it. It's like living through You know, I got to move you over because I'm used to you being on this side of me. Let me put you back. There. Oh, wow. All is right the, magic, the, world. the magic of streaming, y'all. We are. We, <laughs> look, I have never even done that one yet. <laughs> All right. Hey, this, put, is, this is my side of the room. You were, you were in the driver's seat today. Get back over in the driver's seat side. All right, you, you there we go. Okay. okay, that's enough. <laughs> I know how to point, though. Yeah, I know. I don't know how to point either. So <laughs> um, I'm glad you are getting hyped up. I guess you got a, a, a special presentation you're going to give today. I do. I'm going to go ahead and get this party started so we can do some other conversations in between. So oh, nice. um, if you, you got anything else that's on your mind that you need to share? 
I think that was it. I think that was all I wanted to share today. I really like touching on. Oh, and by the way, and I know you told people there is no going back to make for sales. But if you go on there and check um, on our other one, um, it will come out. Somebody did send something and ask if something was still available. So if you go on the creative quarantine. No, uh, they, if they didn't buy it during the sale. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Not so, and that's all I, that, that I was looking, I was like, oh, okay, well I better check with Poncho. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yesterday okay. we are doing um, isolated opportunities to buy. If there you, you go. So be on there, make sure you get it. That's right. You have next to Friday. And actually it's going to be, it's going to be different work next Friday. Oh, yeah. It's going to be different A work whole different next lineup. Friday. So you guys make sure that you're here um, and ready to buy next Friday. That's <laughs> right. Can't say that any clearer. This is a, let me explain something to you. When we have done the quarantine before, you would not have had an opportunity to even see the work. We right. would have saw the work when we did our artist reception. Mm -hmm. Because of COVID, we've had to change the whole format of, of pretty much the quarantine. And so being able to offer it to you as a sneak preview mm -hmm. is something special that we're able to do and something new that we've added to the quarantine. So, right. but it's not a long a term uh, situation. Right. Because yeah. Cause we, we are, really don't want people going back and saying, Oh, is this available still? Or is this available still? Because then that just makes it because a, we can't, we can't keep going back to the page checking. Uh, that just takes too much time. We just can't do that. So uh, it's best to buy everything during the actual sale because then that way we're focused on that because we are in the middle of creative quarantine and we are also artists and we're also hosting and we're also teching. So we don't have that time. This isn't a usual Larry Poncho Brown uh uh, Poncho a thon or a Louise Cutler studio where we're selling out of our own studios and we can go back at any time and look to see if somebody have asked for something or rewatch the video for things. This is totally, totally different. Well, thank you so much for elaborating on that. I want people to really understand it, but the folks who showed up, they showed up ready to they buy. They showed out. That's and what they, they, um, they showed up, showed out. See, uh, we, like I say, we sold about seven, seven, eight pieces. So, mm -hmm. We're going to try to get the party started, y'all. We got one a long day today, so get ready. Let's a long do, day. Let's do what we do. Well, y'all, you know, this is day number 23. 23 is woo, unbelievable, number one. Uh, I got in early today trying to get some things prepped so that I could keep my momentum going. Got distracted. Um, some supplies came in through UPS today. Um, Amazon sent me some stuff. I had been doing some casting early part of the week. And so naturally I wanted to get a jump start on that so those casts could be poured and set. So I'll show you what I'm working on. I think it's really exciting. Uh, new idea, you know, pressing, pressing, pressing new. And so I uh, went ahead and uh, I, I, I got those together, got those set. Um, I really can't wait uh, for these things to set. It's going to take about 48 hours. Casting is one of those kind of things that, you know, you, you're re repeating a design, but you're adding other things to it to, to create a whole new idea. Uh, I have these uh, little pieces on my desk called Organites that are these little uh, a lot of wellness people use, and this was a display energy it's supposed to filter uh, um, um, bad uh, vibrations and all that kind of stuff, you know. And um, I got a couple of pyramids that a friend of mine named Corinthia gave me. Um, I even have one in my pocket, you know. So I said, what would happen if I made an African mask, an African-looking healing mask, like an organite? Boom! So that's what I'm trying to do. So uh, I, I'm going to make a couple people upset with me, one being Louise Cutler. Uh, Louise Cutler sent me some gold. You know, y all, if y'all been watching the show, she's got this collection of leaf that's unbelievable, right? So what she did was she sent me about maybe five sheets of uh, gilding gold so that I could use them on her, on our collaborations. Not, I'm actually going to crumble up this gold and put it in my organite because organite usually have a crystal, a quartz, or any kind of other significant stone. It has uh, metals, healing metals, silver, uh, especially copper, and some other things. 
Um, I have small crystals that I'm putting them too. So I'm putting all that in and I'm topping it off with some gold leaf crumbles. She gave me some real ornate colors and stuff. So I'm, I'm really excited about seeing how this is going to turn out. So I'll show you the setup for that. <laughs> and then, you know, along the way, I was supposed to be making my way back to the back of my warehouse to find some 16 by 20 canvases. I got about maybe 25, 16, 20 black canvases in the back of the studio, which means I got to go dig them out, right? And so I got distracted on the casting, got the casting, then came back. I have this other little piece that I'm working on. It's like a wood mosaic with a cast of a mask. And then I got wood shop to show it. Stop gluing different types of wood on this wood panel and it started getting all funky and I had to step away. So today I get to the studio and down the hallway there's a guy who is a wood turner. He usually gives me scraps. So if I got, uh, if I need wood for doing wood cuts, he'll bring it to the studio. Uh, but he bought these ornate little dropouts from jobs that he's doing furniture with. And this wood is really, really good wood. So I was able to step up my mask. I, I opened the bag up immediately and like a kid and started splashing them all over the table and, and pulling out shapes. And before you knew it, I had went from casting the Orkinite masks to trying to do this wood mask that I uh, had been sketching out uh, earlier in the series, like maybe the first week of the quarantine. And now I'm actually now designing a third one off of the one that I just did. So you'll get a chance to look at those things and see how I'm working and how I'm flowing. Uh, did I get to the back of the warehouse yet to find those 16 by 20s? No, but y'all might have to travel with me so y'all can see what I got to go through to get these things because I told you, one thing I did not have to buy for this quarantine was canvas. Uh, when the, um, the COVID situation hit, it completely killed my paint party groove. So I was doing paint parties once a month. I would have anywhere from 25 to 60 people at a paint party. And so I was used to ordering 100 pieces of canvas at a time to keep them in house. So when it dropped, it dropped hard. And now I got over 100 pieces of canvas that for one person, that's a lot of canvas. So I just need to get back in the warehouse. I'm going to walk y'all back there so y'all can see the journey I got to go through to get to them and pull those out so I can get some 16 by 20 started. It is day number 23. As you can see, I'm pumped, I'm hyped, I'm realizing we're running out of time. And so I'm, I'm about to really try to turn it up these next couple of days to get some things working. If I get it prepped, then there's a good chance I'm going to get it finished. So let me show you my castings, and uh, then I'm going to try to get in the back of this warehouse and, and find those mystery canvases. A friend of mine gave me a piece called an organite. Organite is basically precious metals and a crystal combined in case in a resin. And this is supposed to clean your space energy. Um, it's supposed to, to draw negative energy, deflect negative energy. I keep one in my working area by my computer. I keep one at home when I'm reading. This is one of my favorite ones. Shout out to Corinthia People. She bought me this piece. And uh, it's a really, really nice piece. But you see it's cast. It's got all kinds of layers of yumminess in there. All that metal on it. So I thought, why not cast one of my pieces as an organite? All I need is a crystal. I need some precious metal. And uh, this has some coloring in, uh, resin in it, which I'll probably order some of that so that I can get that effect. But I'm going to do my first experiment with making an organite mask. My first uh, resin pour was this mask here. You see it's almost crystal clear. Um, I put some little plastic eyes I had in there just to have some fun and see what I could do with it. But this is my first test. Turned out very, very nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this concept, I'm going to mix it with this concept, and see what we come up with. So now I'm using Upstart Epoxy, which is a um, clear casting epoxy. I, I wanna, it, it requires no pressurization. It's crystal clear. Very easy to use. I love this stuff. Um, it's a two-part, I think it's two-to-one mixture. 
Um, so I don't know how much I have left to do my pieces, but we're going to try to pour maybe four of them. So here we go. I'm going to make me a big mixture of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is go two to one. I usually get me two containers that are that could keep my units and measurements straight. So I'm going to take this one, make sure everything is clean so that it won't be contaminated. Make sure that all your, your casting materials are room temperature. Okay, so that's one unit. And let me do that again. Now, this is not fast drying like the black onyx I was using the other day, so I can control this a little better. That's two. Let's see, can I fit three? Try three. So I'm going to put, I'm going to do three. Three is good. So now I'm going to go back. This is the hardener. I put one. And I might be. A little too stressed for this container. I should have put that last little hit in there. Two. <laughs> That's dangerously high. <laughs> so I need to remember my measurements so that when I start pouring this, uh, I got two containers here, so I'm going to make a bit of a mess. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to combine this to that one and then finish out this so that I can know that I got my units of measurement right. And then I put one. Two. And then I got to do a half. Which is about all I got left for the hardener. And I'll put this in both. Now, as you can see, my math has just got crazy, but I got even measurements. I'm going to mix this up. And if you notice, there's not a lot of bubbles in there. So this is great. I love it. I expected to be able to have to be able to pressurize these masks to make them clear. This is just a pour and go. <laughs> So I'm using this. I really need another larger container to make sure I got this mixture right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get me another two containers like this and just keep combining this stuff until I'm sure I got a mixture. So since I maxed out my material, I'm going to do a little bucket thing for a minute. Just to make sure this stuff is mixed really good. This is a big mess, but this is the easiest way for me to do this and make sure I got a good mix. Just do a little roulette here and there, half and half. Now I'm just rotating it around, make sure I got a good mixture of each one of these. And the secret to good casting is making sure your consistency of your material is good. It's, it's a lot of stirring. It's a lot of letting it set. I hope I didn't create a lot of bubbles in this in this material from doing that. But I'm hoping that the bubbles would kind of set out of it. So. I can see some of the bubbles bursting now, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Right now, I've got a pretty good mixture of each. So 
I'm just going to combine this down the two containers. And now I'm going to stir this some more. And this will be my last stirring. So now my molds are already out in the hallway. I usually do it in the hallway because I have a huge hole. And uh, this does not have a big smell to it, but I'm also I'm not going to take it out just in case there's fumes in here that I'm not aware of. Okay, so I got my mixtures together. I'm hoping that these bubbles are going to settle out of it. I'm sure that it will. So organite is com composed of uh, precious metals. So I got some, some copper here. I got a couple of crystals. And I also have some gold leaf and silver leaf that um, Louise Cutler gave me that I'll crumble up and use in here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my molds and uh, let's see if I can get in there close so you can see what I'm about to do. And I'm going to start by placing a couple of crystals in the foil here before I start pouring. But something's telling me to drop that in later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and start filling. I'm gonna elevate a couple of these so that I can get a different angle. The good thing about using molds is that you can angle them to do get a slightly different effect from the same casting. So I'm going to angle her up a little bit so she can be um, a little bit more upright. And I'll angle him um, kind of down and away from his chin. Angle her. This one over here, I'll do down and away to, to her forehead. And this one, I'll do the same. I want to pick up the forehead detail in these two. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start laying in my resin. And the whole thing is to pour that in very slow and let it build in to the low points first. Now on these, I'm not going to make them very deep. I want these to be kind of shallow pours. I'm also trying my best to uh, conserve materials. So. Start him low. Get that to a decent height. Hope that the bubbles will all rise off. I'm starting her off in the low points. So far, we're looking good on materials. I'm going to top her off a little bit more. She's going to be a big one. Not too much. And then I'm going to go down to my first one. got enough material to do a substantial view of her. So let that fill in very slow. She might re use up the remainder of this material. I'll 
take the fast food. So I'm going to let that do what it do for a minute. But before it sets too good, I'm going to start laying some crystals down. So these are raw crystals. I want to submerge these in the material so that they can get around it. And I will come back later and arrange it where I want it to sit. I got one here. And a couple of nice small crystals. I'll put this one in here. Excuse my camera angles, just trying to get you guys a little peek into how I do this. I'm going to put three crystals in his forehead because they will fit. I got a big rock crystal here. I'll put, probably put that in her forehead. in the soup that them get nestled in. I see my bubbles are rising to the top, so I'm going to wait about that. This one I'm going to put three next to each other. So I put three crystals in each one. center, lips, eyes, nose, and mouth. I'm just going to use different drop placements for the copper. This one I'll put it around the head. As you can see, we are trying to have a little fun here. So, I don't want to overdo the silver, I mean the copper, but I think I got some good placement on the end there. This should reflect light really nicely through that clear. This leaf, I'm just going to take it, I'm just going to tear that up and start just dropping it indiscriminately in there and letting it do what it do. Stick it to my gloves. That's okay. I know that my girl is going to have a fit that I use her leaf in this way, but <laughs> this is the quarantine, y'all. There are some things we get to do, and some things we get to try. So I'm actually having fun. As you can see, I'm dropping gold leaf in there. Just kind of roughly doing it and letting it do what it do. This is a nice piece of uh, variegated copper. We'll add a nice little flavor to the inside of that. Put some of that in that one too. Let's 
so you can't see all the magic from this position. But um, I have a nice stew of precious metals and crystals in each one of these. some in this last one here and I'm letting it do what it do I'm not trying to over control it I'm just I'm gonna let this just kind of submerge any way it wants to the only thing I don't want it to do is sit on the surface and here's my last piece of leaf I'm gonna break that up with some gold ingredients to my stew are inside there and doing their own thing. I'm going to probably take a, a piece of uh, a tool and really get in there and make sure that all this stuff has got a really nice mixture between all my precious metals and my crystals. This is going to be fun. Can't wait to see how these turn out. Organites. I am creating my own organites. And um, hoping that these pieces pour properly and we get some really nice effects. So until the next time, we will get a chance to see these in a day or two. It's going to take probably about 48 hours for this to set. And um, the whole the idea for me here is not to disturb it because <laughs> I want it to be as crystal clear as possible. So I'm going to let these set and um, you can see these a little later on. So another project I've been working on on and off is I, I, as a child, I used to love working with wood, wood shop. Despite the fact that I don't do much wood shop today or working in wood today is I don't do it predominantly because my space is not conducive to it so but back in the day that was my favorite spot and just um, getting the opportunity to go and work in the wood shop and get your clothes all dirty and everything was kind of neat and so I started gluing this piece down uh, you know, I've been doing casting for the last couple of days, but I've also, I've found a ton of wood pieces from different sources, and I like to do assemblage work with it. So I'll take this off the camera and show you what I got so far. But basically what we have here is one of my casted masks. And as you look, I got nothing but glue pieces on here. This is a wood panel. Um, the face I cast it the other day, shallow cast. Um, these are all wood pieces that have been glued and stacked. Those pegs around the edge have all been drilled, counter and some counter something, then uh, glued in. Might not be using the right wood terms, but that's how I describe it. I have some wood moldings around here that are um, just going to waste. So what I did was I'm going to build an image from this. Right now, I'm sticking pieces inside of that, and I'll start gluing this thing down. So a lot of it's already glued down. The new uh, wood that's been added are the ones with little twists and turns in it. I was fortunate enough that I have a wood turner that uh, is down the hall from me, and he bought me a bag of trimming. So I'm going to use those to start gluing down my assemblage piece now i don't have a title for it or direction for it or anything yet but that's part of the fun it's just gluing everything down so i got a uh, some tight bond ultimate glue that's uh, professional grade glue see if the camera will focus in on it but it may not very temperamental camera but anyway so what i'm going to do is begin to i like to lay things down first and get a space on it 
and then I just come through and hit it with a little bit of glue and put it back in the space where I designated. And that way you're kind of drawing with wood and um, it allows you to, to get the spacing right on it before you start getting too deep. Like I like to have a certain amount of breathing room between these pieces. And so when I was in school, wood shop was the spot I like to hang out in because I got to do a lot of this kind of, not, not like this, you know, the formal class assignments they would give. But um, hey, some of, the, some of the assignments you do are off suits, shoots of what we used to do in art supply class, in art class. And so uh, this piece here, I plan on painting it all black. I may just uh, go to get some flat black spray paint rather than trying to paint this with gesso. Uh, just to give it a little bit more room and um, see if I could do some things with that. Who knows? I might do an alcohol resist on it. See what happens with that. But right now we're moving along fine. I'm going to get probably another one of these started before I um, finish up the quarantine right now. We are cooking with gas because these little wood pieces are doing some things that I would not have had been able to do in the time frame of doing a quarantine. So this is always cool when you can get yourself a little bit of creativity in without all of the headache. Uh, the cutouts would have been really stressful with time. And um, with my guy cutting this out, he saves me quite a bit of time. So kudos to Mr. S Steve Chipnowski for helping a brother out. But these pieces are looking great. Great access to this mask. I wanted to try to do something that looked Afrocentric, but not. Um, you know, the... African people are just use ingenuity on everything that they do. And you start looking at the pyramids and all the other things that African cultures have been around. Some of the creativity that's used is, is still amazes me even today. So I want to do something that kind of spoke to that. And uh, this is what I got. So right now I'm just gluing down these pieces. I'll go back after these set in a little bit and wipe down some of the glue so that I don't get glue spots everywhere. Although I'm gonna tell you, sometimes Elmer's glue or glue in general is a great texture texturizing media. Just not for this. Right now this is so clean. I'm gonna try to keep it clean. And once I get my pieces down, I can go clean up a little bit. I use a Q-tip to do that with. And um, I'll let this layer dry down. And then when I get ready to go back into it again, I'll hold it up, look at it, and fill in with smaller pieces. So that's what we got so far, y'all. I'll show you this piece in a few days. So I'm making some progress on my wood mask. As you can see, <laughs> my studio has just been converted into a funky wood shop. I got my drills out. I got my wood pieces going. But I'm trying to uh, work on these masks. So here you go. Give you a sneak preview of how they're shaping up. You know, I'm a pile worker, so I tend to do that. So I'll just pull this forward. You can see this mask right here is really shaping up. Got some nice design flow in it. It's gluing down real good. Um, I gotta probably be careful with that black mask because it's still setting. But just wanted to see, let you see how this is shaping up so far. So letting that dry and do what it do. Meanwhile, I saw 
an opportunity to do another one. So I pulled my dust down. <laughs> so I'm looking at this. I like that. I like this. I like that. Mmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. I got all kinds of wood pegs, so I can do a different wood peg theme. So I'm thinking, coming in the side of it over here, and adding some wood pegs over there. So I'll go here with the wood pegs, maybe. I got to countersink these holes. I'm even thinking about maybe putting another dinker symbol there. Let's see if I got one to put in there in space. For the time being, you know what I'm saying? I have a bunch of laser cut a dinker symbol, so something like that. Something like that. So in this case, I'm actually drawing with wood and other objects. This is called assemblage. I'm using some um, um, old frame corners that are no longer available. And uh, some wood pieces that I have boxes and boxes of wood. And uh, as you can see, my little graveyard of wood pieces is quite extensive. So I'm using my weapon of choice, the tight bond. Got my my drill, my counter drill. I did a little bit of practice on this nice piece of wood, which I'm probably going to regret. Um, got me some countersinking, um, you know, uh, bits, and uh, lots and lots of wood pieces. So, first thing I want to do is finish countersinking the corners of this. I'll take my pieces loose. I wanted to give you a sneak preview of mask two. So I am got this little piece of wood panel. I've already countersunk some holes in here. I might, might need to make those a little different. And I'm not really being a stickler with the placement. So I'm not worried that there are some are forward and some are backwards, but Things to make sure it's deep enough and make sure it's straight. So, I'm going to go on the other side of this. I already got a couple of holes marked. I'm just going to try to get it as straight as I can, but I am pretty much eyeballing this. to charge up my uh, my little drill here. So you get the picture. Kind of sinking. This is just a wood pebble that I got from Dick Blick. No, actually, Artists and Craftsmen Supply, which is my favorite spot for getting these. And I'm just trying to make sure that these pegs fit in here because I'm shooting for a particular kind of look. I gotta do that a little, a little deeper. But I got these deep already. They just need to be glued. Maybe a couple of them need to be a little deeper than I got them. So they will glue in pretty nice and snug. And so when I get finished, it'll be four of these, four of these. Corner sample, corner sample. Mm. 
Uh, we'll just do some for 10. I'm going to go bulk. And uh, don't tell me I'm running short. I need one more. Wouldn't that be something? It's a run out of that one piece. And it looks like that's what it's going to do to me. So now I got to come up with an alternative plan. But to finish it off, it's going to go here, here, that, think or symbol. Weirdness. That's what I'm shooting for. So hopefully I can find one more peg like that. And we are on inch popping. So as you can see, uh, the first couple of hours of this day was uh, consumed with me casting masks and making stuff. I dropped my what I was doing and completely it got engulfed in this. Last night I was working with some collaborations by Deborah Shedrick. And so I, I, I painted those until like one o'clock in the morning. And so we got some really good start on two of those. So I'm pumped. I'm hyped. What's next? I got to find those 16 by 20 canvases in the studio. And I know where they are. I just got to dig for them. Pick up all of this stuff 
first. That's what we're going to do. We're going to pick up all of this stuff first. Get all of this picked up. And sand brush. Because actually we did some really nice alcohol release yesterday, which was cool. Oh, let me move that because we don't want this. This was one of the ones. This is an alcohol release we did yesterday, which was awesome. So we're going to move all of this stuff and put it somewhere else. Because we're going to use this space today, we're going to use this space for molds. And I'm pretty excited about it because I did do, I did try it out on my, what is considered my button people. <laughs> and I'm still doing some more of those. I'll be um, pouring another one of those. So I'm just going to move my plastic around a little bit so that I can straighten it out. There we go. And then it's going to be, we're going to do, um, let's see. So we're going to grab a couple of, of my moles. So, all right. So we got that picked up. Ta -da! And over here, we're going to grab a couple of my moles so that we can get that part started. So Timothy, the one that they're heavy. So let's do the one um, over on that side. Well, actually, we're going to go over here, and I don't know if you can see it, so I'm going to turn you this way so you can see. Can you see anything <laughs> over that way? Maybe this way. I'm going to bring you over right here. Those are where my molds are, right there. Hold on. Let me see. I'm going to come over there, so I'm going to turn you so you can see um, in there. So my molds are over there, and so let's see. Let's see which one of these we want to do. So I was thinking if I shorten this, this might be a fun one to do. And then, um, and then I was looking at sanctuary because I do like sanctuary as well. So I think we will. Let's do we'll do sanctuary. I think yeah. You ready? You want to grab that in? I'll grab this again. Okay. I got this in. You ready? Alright, so we're gonna bring we're gonna bring this big one over. I don't know if you can see it. Alright. It'd be great if my camera's turned. So stay right here a second. And then I'm gonna turn it this. You got it? way again I know it's wild it's this is my cameraman <laughs> me I'm my cameraman so we're gonna take this one and all right um let's put this way there we go <laughs> so this is one of my bigger molds and I figured what the heck I got resin so I might as well use it let's pull it to the front a little bit more and then we're gonna lay it down. So here we go. And I'm wondering if I can do two of these. Here, Timothy, let's move this one over and then we'll grab another one. Ready? Okay, there we go. So now we're just gonna grab one more. Grab go ahead and grab that little one. So we're gonna grab that little one. Can you get that one? Can you get it? It's is it too big? So we're gonna grab one more, and so I uh, make sure this is angled correctly. We're gonna move this back some. So we're gonna grab one more, and then I'm gonna get these prepped. And then we'll put this one over here. All right, got it. So get your side, and then we're gonna bring it up and down. So, thanks to me. Yeah. All right, that's it. So now I have two. I'm going to do two molds today. Uh, okay. And what I'm going to do is I have to prep them because they are, they have dust. So let's do this. Doo -doo. So I do have to, I do have to prep them because they have dust in them um, because they've literally been sitting 
<laughs> they have literally been sitting over in my little section for a while. Hey, somebody said, hey. Uh, so they've been sitting in my little section for a while. So what I figured is I'm going to just go ahead and um, so I'm going to blow some of the dust off with my trusty dusty um, blow dryer. I'm going to use that to blow some of the dust off. And so right now I'm just going to be prepping. I'm just going to prep everything here. I'm going to actually do the pouring of it on live on, um, on our free quarantine page. So if you want to see, if you want to see me pour it, definitely head over to free quarantine because that where I'm going to actually pour the resin into these really large molds. I'm going to bring you down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So right now, um, because these have been sitting in my studio, they've got nothing. And I have a dust um, sprayer, but I'm going to use this first. I'm going to get some of it out before I do that. Oh, let's get that. And I'm going to lift it up a little bit because I want it all to go out. You know that? All that. Yeah. And then, oh, well, this is all my prep. Like I said, these have been sitting around my studio for a little while, so dust has gotten on them, and so I'm trying to get a lot of the dust out. But I wanted to use this before I use the dust off, because if you know anything about dust off, it gets cold. So I wanted to use the blow dryer on cool before I did the dust off. Now the dust off does blast it. It'll blast anything else out. But as you know, the dust off gets really cold as well. <laughs> that little piece did not want to go. So what I'm trying to do is this. Uh, okay, I'm ready. I use the dust off. So that gets, um, I think that went, actually went up my nostrils, which I didn't want that to happen. So, um, and then I'm going to do this one, pulling this over. This doesn't, I mean, the same thing. This one doesn't have as much. Can I learn what you mean? There we go. So this one didn't have as much dust in it. And it looks like my camera might be a little twisted. So sorry about that. So this one doesn't have as much dust on it in it. And so I'm happy about that. That it didn't have as much dust in it. But I am going to still use dust off. Sometimes there's a little particle that I can't see. Now, so these are all prepped and ready to go. Um, I'm going to spray, I'm going to sit here, and I want to make sure that everything is fitting into where it's supposed to fit. So that's what I'm going to do now. Like some of the, um, some of it might not be fitting into areas and just look at it and see if there's something that we there. Uh, um, like that might come off, um, or I might see the sparkles like pouring here. 
No. And, and then, like I said, I, I don't know if you can use any of the data right here because there's a little key and yeah, it holds, and that little key is all of the information into their data. And if they don't, if they're ahead, Everybody's sitting Some things are sitting up there. I mean, I'm not going to be bored. I don't need to. And then, extra. Now, instead of black videos. Yeah. So, I'm going to try to some of the leaves. Yes, I'm going to look at it. But I'm not going to store it on the whole thing because it is. This is huge. This is a huge piece. So basically, I'm going to pour um, into her, and then we're going to get some of the leaves and some of the plants. I just want to lift this up a little bit because I'm missing a spot. I'm missing a key. This key isn't going in very well. So I just want to make sure this key is where it's supposed to be because I want to pour this particular one. So. This one's all ready and good to go. And, and the other one, see, that's a key. You see that? I don't know if you see that, but that's a key. So this one's ready and good to go. And then this one, I'm not going to pour all the way to here. I'm just going to pour to here and up here and just get all of this of this one. Because I don't want to pour all the way down here because that's a lot. I'm just trying to have some fun and see how, you know, just have a look at it and see what it is I like and what I don't like. And so we're just going to have some fun with these. I'm going to put some color in it. And the reason I put two, I'm not sure how far that will go, but I put two just in case. So that way, if I have left, if I have uh, more than enough, then I'm going to pour it this one. And then if I still have some left, I have... Um, I have the buttkins around, so I'll pour some of them too. I have several molds that I can pour in. So this is um, what I'm going to be doing today on um, on the show. So if you're interested in seeing me, if you're interested in seeing me pour these molds, definitely tune in to um, Creative Quarantine today because I'm going to be pouring these molds in Creative Quarantine today. And Creative Quarantine starts at 2 o'clock my time, so that means um, a little less than an hour. So head over. If you're on Facebook, head over to Creative Quarantine, our Facebook page, or Lee's Cover Studio page, or um, Art for the Soul Gallery, Larry Poncho Brown. You can also find us on YouTube at Larry Poncho Brown, and we can do Black and Fine Art Show. We're on YouTube on all of those places. So definitely check us out because we'll be there. All right. Bye. Those are some huge casts. I can't wait to see you and Mr. Cutler uh, knock this thing out. So I'm going to give you full screen so y'all can do what you do. Your microphones are all blocked, so we cannot hear you. Um, I just want to make I just want to make sure there's enough light over there. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to put it. Hold on. I want it to be a little dark. Okay. Can you put another light over here? Um, so we can see. 
a little better um, what we're doing there. Is that light better? Light is fine, but your angle's bad. Oh, I know, I'm up over here, so I'm gonna bring this down now. Is that better? It's better. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna bring that down. So I think that's good. I think we have a good view of it. I'm gonna, you can, we can uh, still arrange that a little better so that we can see both modes, please. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay, can we see both modes now? No, right there. there, over to your, a little bit more, right there. Right there, okay, yeah. so that's good. All right, so we're going to get started. All right, I'm gonna go over there. So we're gonna get started and um, we're actually going to be pouring two molds today. Well, depending on how much we have and I'm grateful to my husband for helping out because I've never poured uh, this large. Did you say something? Oh no. So, because I've never poured this large of a mold before. So I'm really grateful to him for, for assisting me. So we're gonna be using a one, a one part one, which is um, an epoxy and the hardener. It's a pro, pro, pro marine. Uh, and I think I told you guys about that the last time I used it. And I'm also going to be using a color because I like color in mine. And so I'm going to be using a color. So like I said, this is the first time I poured into a bucket this size. So we're going to start that pouring. And then I got the, I don't remember if you, if you guys remember uh, the release uh, that Poncho had talked about. So this is, I got that because before that I was using, uh, I'll tell you before that I was actually using um, olive oil. So I had really good smell. I had a really good smell here um, in my studio. Really good food smell. So I'm going to get in there and I have a fan going because um, I don't like to smell it. So I'm going to spray it in here and I want to get right in there. Now I'm not going to pour this entire mold. It would take way more resin than that to pour these giant molds. I'm only going to be pouring portions of them uh, because it would take a lot. So, and I have the buttons over here just in case I have a little extra. So I'm going to pour along here and just go ahead and spray that. So we're going to start pouring in. So what he's doing is, is right now, since it's such a large amount, is we're going to use the full, we're going to actually use the full gallon. We're gonna use the full gallon. So I'm, I'm scooting down so you guys can see me. So, um, so basically what he's doing is he's actually mixing as he goes so that it'll mix uh, together. And then I'm going to add some of the color as well. So. And what I really like about this particular resin is that it doesn't go as fast. Um, it doesn't set up not quite like that, uh, what was it, the two minute resin that Concha was using. So let's pour more in. Yeah, I wanted to get it started, but so that the bottom of the bucket had a good mix. Mix to it, it. yeah, I appreciate that, I'm glad. Cause that's something I wouldn't thought about, making sure the bottom, um, we got all of the color and resin off the bottom. Especially in the bucket this size. So now we're just gonna pour in. So now we're just pouring in both of the, both. And that one is the lopping. There we go. We have to squeeze that one because it is not, so, here it is. This is a lot. This is a lot of resin. Um, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it will mix. What I love about this resin is it is forgiving. Um, like some resins are not very forgiving, but this resin is forgiving. 
And of course, I'm going to have to add more color because this is a lot more than I usually use. So I'm going to tap more color in. So there we go. I tap more color in. And trust me, it's probably still not enough, but I already knew that. So I'm just going to, so I'll hold this and get the rest of it in. Because this is the epoxy and it's going to take a minute to come all out because it is the thickest portion of the what we're doing. So we're going to put that in and just let that run. And I think it's about all in. I have no idea. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. I'll hold this. And so we're trying to let all of the extra run in. Here, I'll get back so we can stir. So we're trying to just let all the extra run in and stir at the same time. Yeah, because there's a lot of the harder is pretty much emptied out, but the epoxy is still making its way in and doing its thing. So Nice to have strong arms to stir for <laughs> All right, so I think the partner is done, but the pops is still like, I want more in. So I'm going to squeeze it a little bit, but it's pretty much in. There is still a little poxy making its way into the mix. But I'm loving the color. And it's kind of amazing how far this color will go. This color will go a long, long, long way um, for mixing. And like I said, I'm just letting this, you can see how much of this poxy is still going. Isn't that insane? Look at that. It's still a lot of it still going in there. So we're turning it because we're really trying to get the mixture so we're trying to get a really good mixture. And I think that's going to be it for epoxy. Putting the part A in. And we might be ready. We might be ready. And so one of some of the things that I did get out was um, I got out like these little, I keep putting it. <laughs> it's, it's pajama day, so just know that. So I got out a little brush in this. Because um, there are little areas, so I'll make sure that the epoxy goes in those areas. And then I'm going to spray a little bit more of this, even though I'm not going to um, put it on all of this. I'm going to spray it because if some drops, I want it to be able to release right off of it. So, ooh, 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 here we go. We're going to start with this one. So I'm going to sit here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And we're just going to start pouring, okay? And I'm going to let it move around. So we're going to let this move around because I want it to come all the way to the head. So because I want it to come to the head, I'm going to go ahead and lift up a little bit so that it can go into the head. So I'm going to go ahead and move it around. Okay, that's good. All right, there we go. We're just going to put a little bit more. There we go. Good. And now we have it where we want it. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to, what I'm seeing is I want to lift it up a little bit in the back here so that I can get more towards the head. Is that clay on No, it's not. I'm going to put, um, I'm just going to lift something up. But this is good. And I don't know if we want to go along this ridge. We're going to go up just a little bit more. Along that ridge. Okay, that's good. So, oh, good. This is good. This is nice. Okay, so everything is filling up very nicely. Um, we won't make it up to a lot of the uh, leaf areas just because it, like I said, this is a very large, this is a very large mold. This is a very large mold. It is not a small mold, it's a very large mold. So, but this is nice. I like what's happening. Um, I'm trying to get up to, I guess, this mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. So we're going to pour a little more in. There we go. 
because we're trying to get to a particular bridge of it right in here. Okay, Whoop. all right, there we go. It's doing its own thing. Okay, that's good. Now that's good. That's kind of where we want it to go. And I'm just moving it around a little bit because if it gets up to this ridge, it has to have some other places to go. So, um, and that's what it's doing. It's moving into some other areas, but whether or not I'll use those other areas will be the question. Because I may or may not, I might move it around some more. So I'm just moving it around. And then we're gonna leave this here because we're gonna go over to the next one. So I like that. I like what's happening right there. So we're gonna move over to this one. And basically, I'm going to use this cup because I don't want to go past a certain area on this one. So I'm going to use the cup. Um, he's going to pour into my cup. All right, good, good, good. There. Because I want to pour here first. And because I don't want to go past this area. So I'm going to take it and I'm just going to pour in this area because this is where this is the line where i want to stop and so when he pours he's going to pour um above where i'm pouring and then it'll go from there so so he won't have to pour down here at all okay up in this part starting there and then we're just gonna let it flow. And we're just gonna let it flow and do whatever it wants to do and let it go from there. Cause this is, um, where, where did you put this thing? And then I'm going to just take a tech, bring it down a little bit. Cause I want to use the stick to do now pour in this, just, just in this area right here. Pour right in here. All right, so now we're gonna pour it in this kind of there we go. So now we're just going to pour it in that area. And like I said, I don't want it to go. I know where I want it to go. So I'm just moving it around a little bit so that it gets in some of these crevices that I want. I'm going to put that right there because that will come off. Pour right here. Pour. So as you can see, pouring epoxy, that's good, is quite interesting. So I'm going to pour right in here because I see this area is in need of some. And this is a very flat surface. So one of the things I'm going to do with this one is I'm actually going to add some, um, a re some reinforcement because this is very, very wide. This is a very wide space. So I'm going to add some reinforcement to this piece because it's a very wide space. And also, I'm going to, with this one, I have bubbles. And so I don't want bubbles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the, where is it? Up there. Okay, I'll put it in. I think we'll put it in. We do have some left. This might be a little bit right here. So we're trying to see where we want to put the excess here. Let me put it in here. Now we're trying to see where we want to put the excess, because we do have some left. So I know I want to put a little bit right here, because this little part right here is not all filled up. So I'm going to put some right there, and then we'll put the rest over here. We're going to put the rest over here. In this area, we're going to just come. I have some little things going on over there. Um, and then just in here, I'm just going to put it in here. And then, like I said, some of this um, is going to get carved off anyway. Once I do it, I'm going to carve some of it off anyway. So, um, because it's not what I'm, it's really not the portions that I'm looking for. So, some things will get carved off. And other things will get kept, so we'll see. Um, but for the most part, a lot of different things will get carved off because it's not something that we need. And so I'm going to go ahead and finish pouring that in. And let's right along this edge, 
because you have to really pay attention to where all of this is going. And um, there's some little areas. And like I said, I'll be doing some serious sanding. I can see that because of the way I'm pouring, I'll be doing some sanding out. I'll be sanding some of these things out, and that's okay. Um, I'm, I'm pretty aware of the fact that I'll be doing some sanding. This one, I'm going to pour right here because I can see that it made it up to this, so I'm going to go ahead and pour right in there. So there's several areas where I can see it's made it up to a certain point, and then if it's made it up to that point, I'll pour right into that particular thing. So if it's made it up to a particular level, I'll pour into that. So we'll do some more pour, put the rest of it in, and then it's, it's good to look at it because you have to look at it because there's several, um, you'll see where the actual resin will sink in some places and you'll have to go back into those places. Like right in here, it sunk again. It really sunk down. So I'm going to go back over here, put a little more resin right there. And I just literally put resin there so it will sink down on you so you want to pay attention to your you want to pay attention to where you're putting resin and how it's reacting so i'm going to put a little more right in there and this is a little shallow so i'm going to i don't want too many shallow spaces so i'm adding more to any spaces that may look shallow like right in here is really shallow so I'll add more to anything that might look a little shallow. So, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little more in these because they're right there and they're going up. And this is just like, there's a little tree over here that's near her. So I'm gonna put some more and then I'm gonna add some right here because since it's right here and it's already doing some stuff, I'm just gonna add a little right there so since i have extra there's places i can just add the extra and so that's what i'm doing i'm just adding the extra yeah i'll get the bubbles out yeah so we're going to start getting the bubbles out because there are bubbles in here and i don't want them so what i use and i actually might need an extension board for this i use a heat gun to get bubbles out so I'm going to take this one. I'm going to move it from over here. I thought this would reach, but I don't think it will. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to bring this extension over here for you guys. And plug it in over here. And then I'm just going to take this and try to see if I like the positioning of this, and I don't. So I'm going to actually add a little, um, Bridget, can you pass me the little, just the little container for the top? And I'm going to put it right here. Because that's the other thing is you want to look at it and make sure that it's leveled the way you want it to be leveled. So there's not a lot of bubbles in here, but I'm going to, I want to get rid of, and so this is a heat gun, and I just use it to, Get rid of any additional bubbles that may be in here. But this one is actually pretty good. Oh. This is actually pretty good. Huh? Yeah, so this one's actually pretty good. It doesn't have, I, I don't see any bubbles. There's no bubbles bursting at all. There's a few small ones here. So we'll go ahead and pop those. But there's hardly any bubbles in here, but I don't want any. So I'm going to go ahead and pop any bubbles. And I'll come back later and pop any bubbles too. I think there's more for some reason. Huh? Yeah, this is a little more denser. And I was the first one I poured, so I do see some bubbles, but not as many bubbles as I would think. So, this right here will take a day. <laughs> this will take a day. There we go. All right, so there's not a lot of bubbles in there. There we go. So, 
and I'm going to turn that upside down. There. So this will take a day. I keep walking back. So this will take a day. I, I don't know if you can see it. I'm not scooped down. Oh, I just stepped in the resin in my sock. So this will take a day. Um, so we'll sit here all day, two days. So I'll work in a different work area because this is going to take about a day. I'm going to play around with it a little bit more, just um, uh, balancing, leveling, seeing where I might want to add um, like a hook for it to go into it. Um, so I might add somewhere for a way to hang it. Maybe I'm just going to see because I'm not quite sure how I want to do it. And these give me enough time to do that. I don't have to be in a big rush to put a hook on. I don't have to be in a big rush to do anything with these because they give me enough time to do that. So thanks for hanging out with me because this was a lot of fun. I like doing this, um, watching me pour the resin and get it in. And the fun part is, is that, um, you know, it, during quarantine, we all do like all of these different things. And then all of a sudden, we all are talking about resin and pouring casts and pouring molds. And then all of a sudden we're all pouring casts and we're all pouring molds and we're all doing that kind of stuff. So I really love the rhythm of what's going on with creative quarantine. And I hope you guys are too. So we're gonna wait and we'll see these come out of the cast tomorrow. So this is- Woohoo, that's looking exciting. Hold on, let me go this way. I'm, I'm wondering how it smells over there though. How, say that again. I'm wondering how it's smelling over there. I don't see no masks on. Oh, I got a big old fan. That the fan and the mask are two different items. No, <laughs> this um this particular resin does not have. That's why I use this resin. You know, it's pretty amazing because even the resin I was using, uh -huh. hardly any smell at all. Right. Yeah. I I, just, I, purposely I put it, but I put it outside just in case. <laughs> right. I purposely picked this resin because I knew I'd be using it in my studio. Very very. That's why nice. I purposely picked it because I don't want to use things that are toxic. Those are some monster molds right there, but those are gonna make <laughs> no. nice pieces. And the funny thing about them is, because you, you can paint them completely different, they yeah. still are, have another life. That's what I love about casting, is you can do mm -hmm. so many different things. From well, it's no, I always tell people, it's like me bringing my work to life when I cast it. And mm -hmm. these are actually molds that I use for bronze casting. I just happen to have these at home. Some of uh, some of my molds are still at the foundry, but these large ones I actually have at home. And so I was like, "What the heck? I have exactly. them here. Exactly. <laughs> I might as well." The molds, the molds that I've been using are uh, over ten years old. They've been in a box in the warehouse on a shelf. Yeah. And I pulled them all down. They're in great shape. They're silicone molds. They held up pretty good. And so we get another life out of it. And I'm re-envisioning them from what I did back then. So it's actually so, cool. I want to thank my husband, Richard. Thank you. thank you so much. He's over there like waving. Thank you so much for helping me with that. Yeah, I, I don't think I could have done that out of that size bucket by myself. By yeah, myself. Well, I think you, you did the right thing. <laughs> but that looks fantastic. We're going to run your pieces.
So hopefully y'all got a lot on casting today. You know, hopefully you got a chance to see what Louise is working on. She is um, pouring some major casts. <laughs> so what's going on over there? I, that's that's a lot of work. That is a lot of is work. Like a ten gallon container of, it of was resin, a 10 gallon, and and it still wouldn't have poured those two. It still wouldn't have poured a full cast. Um, once this sets a little bit, I'm gonna put actually put some burlap over this over the back of it just to give it some extra strength. Okay. Um, so when I take it out, it'll have some extra strength. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you know, exactly. so I'm looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, but I want to, uh, I want to make sure I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is now is I'm just looking at the leveling of it and saying, yeah. Hey Kathleen. Hey there. How's it going? It is going. It's, <laughs> it's Saturday, I think. Is it Saturday? It is Saturday. Yeah. It is Saturday. So it's Saturday all day. So I just it's want you to know. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Well, there you I go, y'all. got the, the Mr. Rogers on her today. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do Mr. Rogers. Sometimes yeah, you got to do Mr. Rogers. So, Kathleen, what you working on today? So, the um, that piece I did yesterday. Uh huh. With a, I stuffed it with the marshmallow clay. Mm hmm. And lined the back of it. Okay. Usually, when I do a, a pendant piece like this. I take off this edge right here. Mm -hmm. But this time I wanted to leave it on and use it as a trim and do some kind of uh, fun treatment on here. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm going to do that. Oh, um, okay. stuff, stuff happens. Um, do you know Christopher Maloney? Mm -mm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, so he's an African American clay artist. Look him up when you get a chance. And um, so he, he works primarily with earthen clay. He does do some polymer clay work, but primarily mm -hmm. I think he's an earthen clay. Worker. Okay. And um, he was doing a, a video of himself creating the sculptural piece mm -hmm. and the putting in a lot of work and time into creating the sculpt sculptural piece. And then he put it in the kiln to fire it. And when he opened the kiln, the piece was shattered into pieces, mm. which he says happens uh, to clay workers, earthen clay workers. You mm. hope that when you put your work in the kiln, it comes out mm. alive and in one piece. Right. Anyway, so, um, so when I did this piece, it was smooth across the whole surface. Mm -hmm. um, but when I took it out of the oven, there was a dent inside in the center. Oh, let's see. Let me put you up large. Oh, okay. So you got a little dent in it, huh? Yeah, you see the little dent in it. So I think what I'm going to do is put in uh, a crystal or some kind of bead or stone inside there. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, um, so uh, thinking about uh, surface veneer to use to cover this, um, Pancha was talking about uh, Dinkra symbols. Oh, earlier. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so uh, Dinkra symbols come from Ghana, West Africa. And in my search and research, because um, often we tend to use certain African um, countries, uh, products, artists, artworks um, as representative, not only of Africa, but of African-Americans. And so I wanted to see what else I could find because uh, I know that enslaved Africans came from many different countries and um, Ghana being one of them. So in my search, I found 
a traditional cloth from Northwest Cameroon called Togu, T-O-G-H-U, Togu. And it's this beautiful cloth that is uh, embroidered on black fabric. So it's primarily black fabric with reds and yellows and greens that are embroidered onto the cloth. So this piece I'm wearing and the earrings are inspired by Togu. Oh, okay. So I have, I have some left over. Some of this cane I made for the Togu left over. And I'm thinking that I'm going to use this as the veneer for this. And then I'll do some uh, interesting, maybe some rods that come out from the sides on here. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking, so I think I'm going to use this Togu inspira inspired uh, cane as the veneer for this. Oh, okay. So if I don't like it, um, I'll keep it and uh, I'll make another one of these. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna just lower my camera so that uh, the audience can see my work surface. Maybe I, I need to bring it closer. Ooh, let's see. Yeah, I think we can see right there. You can see right here? Uh, not right there, yeah, right there. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so what I do, now I, I, I have been talking about this regularly. I'm gonna move this over. I ran out of this particular pattern that I wanna use for uh, on some other pieces that already have some of this color and pattern. So I was starting to make, make it again. Um, so I've talked frequently about the liquid polymer clay and how it's slippy, the translucent liquid. And um, sometimes slippy is what is needed to make sure that uh, to make sure that uh, pattern is able to slide around as needed. So I'll just smooth this around. Wipe this off. Now, uh, this cane has been sitting idle for a little bit of time. It's still pretty soft, but I'm just gonna squeeze it to get it warmed up so that when I slice it, it will slice in whole sheets and not into crumbly pieces, which will happen if the clay is too hard. So it's uh, helpful to wipe the blade off to get any potential um, clay residue off that might cause the uh, blade to stick when you don't want it to stick. So I'm just gonna take a few slices here. I always try to get the slices as even as possible but sometimes I don't always succeed. I really liked how this, I really like the Togu, so I, I'm encouraging uh, listeners to go look up Togu. And I think four slices should be sufficient to cover this. Uh, 
cover this piece here. Slippy. So I just position the pieces on there and press them down. Okay, so four was not enough. So with this last slice, oh, maybe I can't. I was going to say with this last slice, I would cut it in half. Um, and I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I said maybe I can't because um, the, the pattern does have a uh, particular uh, right and wrong sections. And uh, the top circles are different on each side. But I think it's not going to matter so much. So, um, What I mean by slippy is that um, the liquid translucent allows for the easy movement of the patterns so they can smooth, smooth together easily. Who's music? Oh, that must be Poncho back there. Somebody's playing music. Hey, Karen. Karen's there. Karen's hanging out. Oh, that's going to be really nice. I love the color pattern that you're putting on there. Yeah, so. Um, so good. So the. There's just enough little extra room at the top here. And uh -huh. this is why the um, the liquid polymer is so handy because it's slippy. So it allows me to um, move it around, stretch, stretch the cane and move it forward just the little bit that it needs to to get to the end. Mm -hmm.
So I think I'm gonna put a little more here, get it a little slippier. So I was on um, Instagram earlier, Louise, when I saw you went live. So I joined in to your video. How are you doing, Kathleen? This is Karen. Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. So your package is on its way. Thank you, I look forward to working with it. Yes, have you worked with polymer clay before? Many times. Oh good, so you know how to, how to reduce the cane? Yes ma'am. Oh good, okay. Because you'll definitely need to um, condition the canes once they arrive. Okay. Poncho or uh, um, Louise, um, I'm I was late, but um, are we still doing a discussion or Q and A? I think they're not there. That's but okay. somebody's got their somebody's I'm got their anyway. music playing. Somebody's got their music playing. Okay. okay. Was that to me or to them? Oh, I'm I'm saying oh, I okay. I acknowledge that the music is playing. Oh yeah. How's your day been going? Very productive. Very, very yeah. productive. I got a kiln going on right now. Yep. Uh -oh. Kiln going, trimming, getting ready to make some hair a little bit later. Um, I've been up since seven, so it's a lot of stuff going on in the studio. Trying to keep yeah. it clean so it, uh, it's not all over the place. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, uh, I was... I was up until about two o'clock this morning and then up at seven. You were working? Yeah. Yeah, I think everybody I think everybody's working now. Yeah. Everybody's trying to get it in and get it done. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Final finalizing or finishing up the pieces. Nine finishing days. Up the pieces. Does somebody have on a hair dryer? Yeah, it was Louise. Uh, Louise, jeez. We got a new, uh, we got a new uh, Lashawn. Yeah, she's actually uh, working on some big casts right now. She's trying to warm them up a little bit. Oh, okay. Okay. How you doing? So Mr. I'm going to get. I'm doing good. 
I'm going to get some saran wrap to um, smooth this out. I'll be right back. Um, I am drinking tea uh, since uh, uh, Louise, uh, that's the only thing she drinks. So I'm drinking it in her uh, honor today. What kind of tea are you drinking? What kind of tea? Um, a, a Indian spice tea. Indian uh -huh. spice tea. Say, so Karen, do you... Have, do you know Christopher uh, Christopher Maloney? No, I'm not familiar with that person. Really? Okay. I heard that name before. You have or have not? I have. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Frankie. Um, hey. if I see a picture, um, uh, hey, um, if I see a picture, I may remember. But right now, no, I don't know. The um, the name is not familiar. I might know yeah, the word. He's, he's an African American uh, clay, uh, uh, earth and clay sculptor. He does dolls. No, yeah. I may not know him. Is he local? He is not local, and I, I but I don't know where he is located. Say that again. I don't know if, if he's shown anything out here in Western Mass. He just sounds familiar for some reason. Yeah, I'll look him up later. It's looking nice, beautiful. It is pretty. I like that cane. That's really pretty. That one. This this black this one? Mm -hmm. That's really pretty. <laughs> yeah. So, Poncho, I have a question. I know you're hiding back there behind the Poncho Green. Hide back there. Yeah, what's up? Okay, so I was thinking originally to, um, you know, to put the little, you know, put like either a hanging mechanism inside, but then I thought maybe I should mount them. That's what I'm doing with all of mine. I'm casting them and I'm putting them in other other frames or other mm -hmm. boxes. I found some wood panels. Uh, That's what I was thinking. I think I want to mount them. As I'm reversing my 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 uh, my uh, my wood panels and letting it be a frame. Okay. All right. That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, I think I want to mount them. And and how are you adhering them to the wood panel? I'm using six thousand or Gorilla Glue or something like that, and then I'm okay. screwing them from the back. Oh, so, so you are putting some screws in from the back? Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, because I think that's what I want to do. I think I want to mount them as opposed to, um, so with that being said, you know, I don't know if I want to put the burlap on it, on the back of it. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. If I'm going yeah, to I mean, mount the burlap, it's got to serve a purpose. It's already going to be strong. Right. And so, well, that was it. If I, I was thinking maybe it'll be too a little, little too flexible, but it's a pretty hard resin mm. um, if it was going to hang separately. But if I'm going to mount it, I don't think I want to put the burlap because you'll be able to see it through. 
Well, you got options. You can do one mounted in one frame. I know, I know. Since that one's already in the already kind of poured in a square, maybe um, let the other one be freestanding. Right. So that's why I'm thinking. I want to kind of play around, and play around with it. See mm. what I what I come up with. That looks fantastic, Kathleen. Isn't that a beautiful like color? Mm -hmm. Kathleen over there working it out. Yep. The design. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, uh, so you've been doing several creative quarantine pieces. Um, you have any ready for us yet? Pictures? Say that again. Say that I again. Said, I said, do you have any of those nice creative quarantine pieces ready for us yet? Um, not exactly, but it's not time. <laughs> huh? I said not exactly, but it's not time. Oh, okay. It's not time. Okay. Well, you know, we, we just we're just excited about what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, didn't even, I didn't even say hi to y'all today. Oh hey Frankie. Oh Karen. <laughs> Karen, Miss Johnson said, did you enjoy your tea time last night? Yes, I did. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Miss Johnson. <laughs> so you decided to have another sale this Friday? Yes, we did. We did. Uh, we had a. It was a great time. She said. Oh, she said hi, Frankie. Hi, Frankie. Yeah, we decided to have another sale this Friday. We're excited about that. Well, it's good that you made that decision. I was thinking that it would be a good idea to have a second sale on this Friday. Oh, are you going to get, are you going to have some stuff ready for us? I will. Oh, exciting. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll, I'll be done with mine. There's Karen, was that you clearing your throat, girl? <clears throat> no, of course sorry. not. I'm drinking my tea. Okay. Sorry, that's me. <laughs> sorry. Somebody's in there clearing their throat. Mm. That's, that's me, my bad. Very loudly. <laughs> It is so exciting to have, you know, everybody on here. Let's see, what are you up to, Frankie? I guess uh, I'm, all, I'm done with this piece today. Ooh, did you hear that, Poncho? Frankie's done with that piece. <clears throat> I'm just doing um, the insides. Okay, the it looks area. really, really nice. I really love that piece. It's a beautiful piece. Oh, I, I put pipes inside mm. of, inside their bodies. You put what? Pipes. Oh, okay. Inside the shadow of, mm -hmm. of their bodies. The protesters. Mm -hmm. um, I put pipes as, like to say the whole thing is flowing the same way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in different directions. They really don't have them. Yeah, but, so I'm just drawing pipes. Oh, it looks great. Oh, John then stepped into the room. Hey, What's Lashon. up there? What's up there, Tribe? How y'all feeling? What's good, man? Hey, y'all, y'all was good. I'm loving what hey. I'm seeing. Oh, I worked on my I worked on my LaShawn deal piece today. Well, that's good, Louise. Between all the other stuff that you've been working on, I'm glad you were able to make a little <laughs> progress on that one as well. Squeak, look, squeezing you in, man. Squeezing you in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm gonna show y'all some of the pieces I just completed. Oh, uh oh, we got it. We're getting a show from LaShawn. LaShawn, oh, hold on. Let we let's see this piece. 
Let's see this Catherine. Catherine's got a, it's a beautiful, that's gorgeous, Catherine. Bring it up closer to the, bring it up a little closer. There it is. Nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's then this, gorgeous. this is going to go okay. in the center. In the oh, center. Okay. Yeah, that is gorgeous. And I am a Kathleen, I'm a Catherine. Thanks. Why do I keep calling you? Catherine. <laughs> I'm sorry. There is no Ren in your name. You're she'll, she'll, get, she'll get it right by the 31st day. Kathleen the Queen. <laughs> I, I, I know, man, there are days I get it right, and then there are days I think I must have, you know, drifted off. That's all right. Yeah. Kathleen. All right. So LaShawn's going to do a little bit of an unveiling of some of the things that he's finished. Let's have a look. Well, it's not that many. It's only two pieces, but this is one of them right here. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. That's nice. I love the ivy and the pearl. Okay, now do one for the oh, day. Yeah. I need you to do okay. royal blue and white. LaShawn, oh, look at that. Royal blue. 1920. <laughs> this oh, is the other one. There's that's your blue and white right there, Karen. There's oh, your there's blue and white. white right there, Karen. <laughs> that's as close as you're going to get. For real. You see them talking about the royal blue and white? That's I beautiful. That pink and green, and I was Thank like, wait you. a minute. Ah. Wait a minute. Yeah. It's like, so, don't. I opened up my uh, piece from Deborah Cedric. Oh. And uh, I'm working on it right now. This is. You're not going to see a sketch on it, probably. But this oh, is the board. That she, this is the board she sent me. Now this is going to be a collaboration of collaboration. This is going to be three artists in this collaboration right here. It's going to be my Deborah Cedric, Kathleen, and myself in this piece. Oh, okay. Kathleen is going to be in there too. Yes. That so should be nice. Stay I, tuned. This I will be ready it. by tomorrow, I'm sure. I'm sure. That sounds Can't really to nice. Me too. Thanks. You guys got me all excited. I'm loving the resin pieces you guys are doing. Yeah, that's something we'll have to experiment um, with in the near future. Well, this stuff is a plan. It's already been set up. <laughs> I was like, what? It's doing its own thing. Okay, so now this has to get into the oven again. And um, I 
then it'll be ready for its next step after that. Cool. Hey, Poncho, can you put yourself on full camera so I can see that? Hold on, let me get it. Let me get it for you. Thank you. There you go. It's some cool. assembly pieces. Yeah. Those are cool. Got a full house, people. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Love it when the artists are in the house working. Doing their thing. You put me. Can you bring your camera down a little bit, Karen, so we can see what you're working on? Oh, sorry. There we go. Are you tired, Karen? Who? Karen, are you tired? Me? Tired? Oh, no. Not at all, actually. I'm just um, thinking about um, how I'm going to um, put these pieces together. Um, uh -huh. I can, so um, I have I can tell uh, several by your of them. Uh-huh. Hmm? I, I can tell by your energy, the sound Sorry, of your that voice, again? that your energy is. Oh, okay.
Mm-hmm.
piece by LaShawn Bu, who um, that uh, I'm going to be collaborating with. Um, this was his contribution. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I'm going to add a zebra here, because uh, this reminds me of a zebra nose. Um, so I'm going to be putting the first layers down. Just like LaShawn worked, I'm going to work in um, dark to light, although I mean, I suppose more like red on blue over here. But um, my goal is to lay down the first layers of blue. Um, and then I'm going to do ochre like here, um, but first I'm going to lay down some red and then do the ochre over the red. Um, and then uh, I'm going to do the stripes on top and silver. I'm going to try to match that silver. So here it goes. It's not a style I normally work in, but I love trying new styles. The key is going to be to get that Republican color match exactly. Oh, beautiful. That's pretty straightforward. Bless you. Bless you. Run tight. Hard. <laughs> yeah, that might actually dry. Good enough. It's not going to be perfect because we're not using the same paint. But I don't want to take this too far because it's much easier to. And I want to try to avoid dry brushing. I should use more.
the nice thing about doing this is that uh, I can like experiment with where, so I believe the zebra's eye is gonna end up here. But if I mess up, because it's gonna be painted over with silver, so that I can like let this dry so that when I add over it, it's not. That's good because I got a meeting, so. So it'll give it plenty of time. I'm gonna stumble this because I'm gonna actually add a teal similar to that one. And then I'm gonna add Color matching. So I've actually practiced color matching doing things like um, magic the gathering altars. So that's when you take a, a magic card and you you might like I like to extend the art to the sides of the card, um, but it teaches you. You know, I do it more as an exercise than anything because um, you've got to be able to paint on a small scale and you've got to match the colors exactly for it to blend and look good. So I'm using this color as a transition between the, the blue and the ochre that I'm going to add on top and then there'll be red mixed in too. So. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to mix with the yellow. All right. I'm just figuring out red to match out. But I'm going to take a break for now. Here we are. I started this one yesterday. Um, LaShawn painted this side, and I'm painting a zebra on this one. Today, I'm putting on another coat um, before putting it down again. I'm hoping that this red, um, I'm struggling a little bit with color matching, but it's because I'm not used to painting over black with some of these colors. So um, this may be too bright. I'm hoping not. I'm also trying to let my breath open and make sure that, that the color that I get is as clean lines as possible to kind of match LaShawn's style. I just changed it out so it'll be clean. 
inside of the two. Hold. So I've got the eye is going to go here. Mm -hmm. Too bright, I think. Let's turn it down just a little bit further. How about burnt umber? I want to maintain a nice look. It's mostly going to get covered by yellow and white. Let's see. So. Different plan for this one. Cancel. Oh. So what I did was I did some digital sketches first. Oh. Sometimes blended purples can be a little muddy. Mm -hmm. Although I think that's actually a good match for the red I was looking for. Well, now I know how to make that red. Thank you. 
So here I am checking back in. I got the beginnings of the lion down. It was really hard to match this silver that LaShawn used. Um, I did so imperfectly, but at least my brush strokes aren't too fuzzy. Um, now I was going to go in and just add some teal, kind of the finishing touches, and then I'm going to add some sweeping whiskers. That's the part that makes me nervous because this starts to be a little. I'm pretty sure this color is pretty close.
How are you guys doing today? We got a full house. Hey, I'm on. Got Deborah hey, in the room. We've got uh we got a full house. Karen's in the room. Deborah. LaShawn, I tell you, we got the it is rocking in the house today, Kathleen. Hey. We don't normally have all of the, I mean, Kathleen, we have actually got Kathleen in here with Deborah and Karen and LaShawn and Frankie and Mr. Poncho. Full, full house tonight. I had to take a little, little nap before I came on. Oh, is that what, is that, is that what, is that what you had to do? Cause you've been hanging. <laughs> Hanging out with the late night owls. It was a me day. <laughs> a me day. She uh, said she was taking a me day. Did you hear that, Karen? Absolutely. So I'm trying to something. We can all use a me day. Yes. Yes, we can all use a me day. I need a me day. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Hold on. <laughs> like your hair. There she is. There we go. It's all of this, uh, playing around with all of this technology. Look at that collaboration Michelle did with LaShawn. That is very, that is fantastic. It really is. Yeah, I like that. Uh-huh. Michelle came in. Michelle brought the animals in. So, um, I hope you enjoy the process. <laughs>
first came across this particular vase uh, design maybe two years ago, and uh, two, two or three years ago. And I thought it was really cool. Uh, I thought it was more practical than some of the other vases that I worked on because unlike uh, ceramic or glass or anything, I didn't have to worry about this particular one breaking that easy. Uh, so I didn't have to handle it so much, you know, delicate hands. This is actually made out of wood. So it's been treated, texturized with various things, including burlap, to give it a really interesting look and feel. So what I'm doing now is like building up my, my colors. by the time this is all said and done, this piece will look nothing like this. So part of the fun is seeing the metamorphosis of it as we continue to fly. colors to it. Yeah, I start off with dark colors and then I move to my medium tones and then my uh, light tones. All helps to give it a uh, sense of depth.
may have noticed the pieces on the floor. Uh, those are some other projects that I'm working on. I work on several different ones at the same time. So they're at the ready. I may work on this for an hour or two, then go back and work on some of those. This is looking pretty good. Loving that vase, Karen.
Hey, Louise. Yeah? I got an unveiling for you. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's put it up. Let's see. Let's see what you got. So this is the collaboration between myself, Debor, and Kathleen. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I love the earrings. Very, yes. very nice. Yes. That is gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Sean over there. Unveiling. Love unveiling. Love him, love him, love him. Yes. Now I got to go work on something else. <laughs> you still haven't got my package? No, I have not. As a matter of fact, I look for it today and I have not received it. You know nope. what? This is just ridiculous. You pay all that money and they still don't get your stuff to place. Yeah. But it is coming from Colorado, so I do understand. You know what? I'm I'm a little tired of you all talking about it's coming from Colorado. <laughs> LaShawn, <laughs> LaShawn, you yes, didn't hear that's me. Right. Like that's right. He requires the original Pony Express. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sean, I, I, I have yes, Karen. Very, very nice, very nice. And my stuff you. is mailed to you too. So I'm, Super. Uh, you'll get it. You'll get it. Um, okay. And okay. And what's the excuse for Karen? She's not on the Pony Express. Uh, she just broke the damn thing a couple days ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dang, I mean, give me a break, uh, uh Louise. <laughs> hold on, hold on, give me a second. <laughs> and Karen, too. Just thought I'd throw that out there for you. <laughs> well, Louise, Louise, you mailed me something, I haven't gotten it either, so don't worry, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because I did mail you something. Uh, I think Louise is faking people out by saying she mailed stuff. <laughs> hey, hey uh, I'm going to send you the video. You know? I got video proof that I put stuff in the mail. Uh, we're going to get I, it on Tuesday, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody don't get it on the 1st of February, it looks like. Chunk, yeah. It's coming uh, Sunday the 31st. Of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I want everybody right. to be done with it, Sunday the 31st. Look at eleven fifty nine. And all of it better be done come February first. Yeah. I can't, you know, I can't count for the postal. I can't count for the postal service and all that stuff. But well, that's true. Well, I was sending it FedEx, but FedEx was tripping. And then, uh, well, the boards is coming. UP, uh, UPS. 
Oh, oh, she sent us on the Pony Express, LaShawn. You hear that? Uh-huh, yep. <laughs> I didn't mean to. FedEx messed me around, and then I ended up going over to UPS. Because it was, I mean, I ended up going to the post office because it was supposed to all go through UPS, and then um, FedEx ended up messing it up. Mm-hmm. I know, I know. Excuses, excuses. Yeah. Let me tell you, LaShawn, she wouldn't have made it online. No, <laughs> no. All we're going to do is take your package and put it in the exhibit. Just we're not even going to work on it. We just take your package and hang it on the wall. <laughs> I know, just put it on the wall. It'll be, like, what? It'll be like the banana. It'll be like the banana. <laughs> exactly. It'll be like the banana. It'll be yes. uh, modern modern art. <laughs> and it'll sell for millions. And then everybody can say it was their collaborative piece with Louise because the, they'll be like, well, what was your collaborative part? I brought it here and put it on the wall. And, <laughs> and all of this is drug free. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's how we're going. That's, that's how it's going to be. Pancho, you have definitely given me something to work on. I'm not lying. <laughs> Say it again, uh, look, Karen. I said you have definitely given me something to work on. This is uh, oh, that is bad. That's a bad, it's going to be a bad piece, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will be. I'm that's trying to get in every other camera uh, cranny. That's because you came out the you came out the blocks running. We had to slow you down. That is a bad piece. It really is. Unfortunately, he didn't come up with anything to slow LaShawn down. At this <laughs> point, at this point, everybody's racing for the race to, for the finish line. <laughs> all of the stalling I'm, tactics are over. I know. <laughs> it's all over now. Right. Because I was like, I'm racing. I mean, slow me down. I'm like 110 right now. <laughs> We're all headed towards the finish line. What time you'll be there? Uh, say that again. What time you gonna be there? Eleven fifty nine? At the finish line, that's right. Eleven fifty nine. I know, even oh, my sleep cycle has been weird. It's like I couldn't even go to sleep last night. I had to force myself to go to sleep. No, I don't force uh, it. I just go to sleep. My adrenaline is pumping. So you couldn't wait to get up and work on those uh, resin pieces, huh? Yeah, I think that's what it was. I was like, ooh. I yeah. mean, well, we know you were up at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I don't think I got up at four today. Four oh four. Is that when? Is that when that came in, Karen? Yes, ma'am. I was like, goodbye, good night. <laughs> All right, it's ready to go. Ooh. I'm gonna look at it one more time before it goes into the fire. I don't know. You missed the spot. You know what? I was stupid enough to go back. <laughs> like, you see that? <laughs> yeah, it's right under that last tier on the left. Are you being funny? <laughs> Karen, like, I can see that close. Even uh, on the oh, big yeah, screen. You do. I know some people are looking at you on the big screen. I got you on the big screen, and no, I can't see that. Cool. We got nine on the screen. 
Is that right? Nine. Yeah. Making it all happen. Laura, tell me about what you're working on, girl. It's almost like a quilt. The mic is familiar. I'm you. Is Deborah? Oh, there she is. Turn your mic on, Deborah. Oh, she's muted. Hold on, let me see. The bar is like a picture. So I took a piece of and put the bar is like a picture. And is it just me or is the bar frozen or is it just me? No, she's frozen. Oh, Death. she always makes a nice picture. <laughs> Or we missed all of that. All of the board's explanation. <laughs> She's like, that's enough. What is that? Is that a collaborative piece? That is really nice, Poncho. What is that? Uh, just just a painting. Oh, okay.
Kathleen, I see you over there working away. What you working on? Uh, say that again, Kathleen. Some earrings and a couple of pendants. Oh, nice. Yes, and I'm thinking to use this. Mm. With the, okay. the men's piece. Oh, okay. Is that a piece you made? No, this is a brass bead, a brass pendant from Ghana. Okay. I like that. Yeah, it's nice.
Zeldin's in the house, people. Ooh, wow, that's nice. Love that, Ryan. How you doing, Louise? What's up, Sheldon? I'm doing well, and yourself? Wonderful. What you got for us tonight? What you working on? Um, I've just been trying to figure out what I'm going to do with these uh, prints that I got from um, Poncho. Oh, okay. A more. So you're going to keep cool. me busy, so. Um, oh, yeah. I think that was his intention. Yeah, there was a method that he showed you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't ever have a problem with that. I, I didn't do that. Yep. Between him and LaShawn.
Greetings, friends. So in today's episode, um, I'm going to talk about these color studies that I did um, over the last day or so. Um, I think I spent maybe uh, just a couple of hours on maybe an hour and a half on each one. Um, and I was led to this idea of working towards um, color theory concepts through my collaboration in the creative quarantine with artist Michelle Vigian. And my dear, I hope I'm saying your last name correctly. Instantly, I was drawn to the light and color of her artwork and the fantasy of it. I just knew that I was going to collaborate with her. Um, and we started talking and I told her what I was responding to in her work and she was like, Oh, you know, I get that inspiration from James Gurney. And I was like, oh my God, that's one of my favorite artists of all time. And I'll tell you my James Gurney story sometime. But um, yeah, we were both inspired by the same artist. Um, I was also thinking about the artwork of Judy B, who I had the great pleasure of meeting um, in 2020 at C2E2 in Chicago. And she too is just absolutely brilliant when it comes to color and light. And so I started to explore color and light and color theory in ways I hadn't um, looked at it before. Um, and what did I discover? Well, I discovered that it is an entirely ambitious idea to think that I could throw away everything I ever learned and ever studied and ever experienced um, about color theory as I knew it Forget about all that, learn this whole other concept about color theory, do that in one morning and create some beautiful piece of artwork while you're at it. Okay, well, that was a tall order. Uh, my brain was broken by the time I was done uh, thinking about this color study, but it was a lot of fun to approach. So where did I start? Um, well, after discussing James Gurney um, with Michelle and she had recommended a book that I look at. And it was a book that um, I had, I'd seen this book over and over again. I'd gone to James Gurney's blog many, many times and just tried to learn what I could for free and, and what I could pick apart by just dissecting his work. And when I went to Michelle's work to try to dissect her work and how she was approaching color, her color palettes, um, how she was applying it and how it was playing with light, I was like, oh, well, somebody already broke this down, you know, and explained it. Maybe I should just go ahead and get this book added to my library. So I went ahead, bought the book, started reading. Oh, I devoured every word. I mean, the illustrations were distracting <laughs> because they're so gorgeous. But it was it was a great pleasure to do that kind of um, study again. I mean, I really enjoy studying things, like most of the books in my bookshelf are not novels and stories, but textbooks and how-tos and things like that. So this was fun for me, um, but time was of the essence, right? Time was of the essence. I couldn't come up with some brilliant masterpiece in one morning, document it, then make some video <laughs> about it, narrate that video, edit it, get it out on time, <laughs> and um, you know, and really process this uh, this thing that I was learning, this new way of applying color and thinking about the color wheel. Uh, yeah, so I scaled back, <laughs> I scaled back and just tried to get a grip on, you know, what was I learning? You know, how, how, how are these colors interacting with each other and, um, and how were they playing with each other? Um, and what were some of the differences um, between what I knew uh, through study, what I knew intuitively, and what was being taught here. Um, well, it's very hard to explain, and I think it would be unfair to give you all the secret sauce without, uh, I can't tell all of, <laughs> like spill the beans on every single solitary thing that I read in this book. Um, it is a definite recommended read, and you'll probably see my color palette, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see my color palette pop up now and then to remind myself of what I'm trying to do here. Um, at one point, I just blocked out half of the face because I thought, oh, maybe I'll just work on this half and I won't have to do a whole portrait. And then I can really see how the colors were playing with each other in this more complete area of, of, the, uh, of the portrait. So what I was discovering here, um, it, it 
really wasn't coming out the way I wanted. And I, so I decided don't have expectations. Just see what happens when the worms and the pools start playing with each other, um, how they interact and what the effect is and learn from it. And I was finding that it, um, there was this very electric effect happening. Um, these blues and purples and cyans were just ah, driving me crazy. They're so pretty. Um, where I was disappointed um, was that she no longer looked like a brown-skinned woman uh, or a light-skinned brown-skinned woman. She now looked like she had purple skin or was just really saturated with this light. So that was a note that I kind of kept to myself in, um, when I went to go back into the next study. I thought about ways to make sure that this person still red as having brown skin. But I wouldn't have known any of this until I just tried. And that's kind of the beauty of um, ex exploration and experimentation. Um, even playing in these color fields on the other side, it was really more about mood. And I was starting to notice how things were starting to look a little sci-fi a little bit. I started to feel like a book cover to me a little bit. Um, another friend of mine gave me the same feedback it was looking like a book cover or a horror book cover for this one and um and i was thrilled um by the results of kind of mixing um, some abstract shapes with this portraiture so some of the things that i liked about it i kind of kept note of and tried again here um this time instead of starting from scratch with the portrait because you know takes a, a little bit more time to develop the portrait that way and things like start out really really blobby um, I decided to just pull out one of my pencil drawings from the archives uh, bring that into procreate and color it so you'll see a little bit of my coloring process my digital painting process where I start with the line drawing I put flat color um, underneath of that and then I build the highlights and shadows on top to build the form um, and you see it built up stroke by stroke. I also went ahead and said, yeah, I'm going to just do half the face. This will save me a little bit of time. Plus, I like the effect of this person kind of emerging out of this atmosphere, this abstract atmosphere that kind of almost feels like, I don't know, it feels like the universe or like some other world. I really feel like it, it, it kind of makes her feel like she's a part of this universe. And um, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. Um, and I think too, uh, I started to empathize with um, what was happening in both of these pieces where it was like a part of this person was concealed, a part of this person was revealed. And um, there's this sensation that you may know what's going on, may not know what's going on. Things are kind of scattered, things are kind of orderly, you know. And uh, let's pretty uh, accurate description of how I feel many times. So uh, I was kind of feeling it. I was kind of feeling it. And um, a couple of people said it had a horror kind of feel to it, which is um, a, a genre I'm newly interested in. Uh, so I was, uh, it was kind of interesting to hear that that was coming through in this kind of free form, uh, kind of like stream of consciousness pushing color around just to see what mood or effect energetic that it would achieve. And uh, what I found, um, I started to in one um, artist, um, oh gosh, Al Johnson. He's a abstract artist who is phenomenal. And I typically don't get into abstract too, too much. Um, abstract paintings, Specifically, um, I really like representational artwork. What can I say? It's, that's what I enjoy. Um, I don't have anything against it. It's just not really my cup of tea. But his work, that was a little different. I always had an emotional response to his work, and I was always surprised by it. Like, I don't even like work like this usually. <laughs> and I started to pick apart his work. Why do I like it so much? Like, ah, uh, I see what he did there. You know, the movement of the colors, how, you know, the glowing of the colors, the energy of the colors did create mood. There was, uh, even though things looked like they just kind of fell that way, um, it was very much intentional. And so I kept those things in mind, too, when I was working through this piece. How can I make this feel like uh, organic, but 
I I know that I'm kind of manipulating this to be that. Um, I also played around with some brushes just to explore what they would feel like. Um, the Kirk that I normally don't use. I try to stick to just one brush if when I can, maybe two, because uh, I think it just increases this painterly effect that um, I enjoy. Uh, but this was fun. This was fun to explore. Um, it also reminded me of work that I enjoyed by artist Claudie Kahn. I believe he's out of Canada, um, where he also mixes a lot of these kind of abstract, splashy kind of shapes with um, beautiful portraits of women. And um, so it made me think of his work too. So I was inspired by that and um, the qualities of his work that I enjoyed. And, you know, tried my hand at that. Like, how can I add that to, to this piece here? And this is where we landed. This is where we landed. So, uh, yeah, thank you for joining me um, to go over my color theory um, adventures. I think I'm going to do some more of these. I really like how these, I like where these are going. I, I can, I sense a series happening. Um, they both kind of remind me of this idea of bioluminescence, which I seriously enjoy things that naturally light up. So uh, thank you to Michelle for your inspiration towards these um, color studies. To James Gurney, JDB, GDB, excuse me, and, and to all of you for joining me today. Thank you. I'm out. Continue my work on this base right here. It's coming along good. Work on the lips.
so when I'm painting something, I'm usually working in uh, usually a minimum of three three layer process. So our first layer. lips. I'm looking for. Get some more red lips. We got short. How's it going out there, people? I'm dozy. I'm starting to get dozy. You're getting dozy, Frankie? Yeah, so much detail. Like, I'm getting lost in this. 
Dozy is good. <laughs> Kathleen's hanging out with us. Look at her. Kathleen is rolling tonight. She is rolling. <laughs> She's got those earrings going and all kind of stuff. Very nice, Franklin. I hold it down a little. Maybe if you tilt it, tilt it back. See, yeah. There we go. You're all done with it now. Uh huh. Hmm. <laughs> no, I, I'm gonna be done with this. He said he was done with this. He was just he was just doing some touching here and there. I just I added some pipes on. Frankie said this was it. This is yeah, the day. This is so it. The day this is the day of completion, Frankie. Yeah, and I started the other one. Mm -hmm. The bottom part. Remember that nagging bottom part that I was telling you about on that painting? I started doing that bottom part of it. Made it. Thank you. 
Very nice, Deborah.
So Frankie, you over there signing, signing it now, right? Frankie. You know, cause you said you were finished. So I'm just checking. So I'm just assuming you signing it now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know Frankie signed this stuff over and over and over again. I yes, he does. Yeah, I'm just touching up these pipes. Oh, is that what it is? I thought you did that earlier. I did. Well, I drew out the pipes, and then I had to tighten it up a little bit. Clean out the... Clean it out. That's the noise you hear is my electric eraser. Oh. And then what works with me is that hairspray, the green bottle aerosol. Don't use hairspray on your stuff. Don't use it. No. But that only that damn that. I usually get a good effect with that. Go buy you some good workable fixative. <laughs> That's right, Frankie. You're a professional now. You've been in, in the room with all of these incredible artists, showing you all of their incredible techniques and products. And you use hairspray. 
hairspray. <laughs> Use hairspray on hair. Use the products that are properly suited for what you are doing. Well, you know what? When you look at what the hairspray does, it gives it a nice shine, nice coat. Yeah, you could do that with crystal, crystal clear. You can do the same thing with Krylon. What's that you using over there, Poncho? What's that? I am starting another painting. Oh, okay. My bag of goodies. I see you got a bag of goodies over there. My tear offs. Yeah, it's time for me to get up. It's time for me to get up out this chair. <laughs> Head over to my laptop. I think, I, I think I, I've taken a long enough break. With my chair sitting.
How you doing over there, Deborah? Your mic's muted. Your mic's muted. How's it going over there? Your work looks great. Oh, man. Well, I think I'm 90% finished. Oh, let's see. Oh, hold on. Let me make you bigger. I can see. Oh, wow. Nice. That's so nice. Yeah, I really like that. That's so nice. You don't see, you don't see the food on my mouth. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in over here eating. Hey, I was just uh, eating behind mm -hmm. camera myself. Oh, is that what you all doing while I'm sitting up here being Mr. Max, Master Mix? <laughs> you ain't mixing, huh? I'm over here being Mr. Master Mix. You ain't mixing, huh? You ain't I won't tell. I won't say a word. You want to say a word? I'm trying to think it's LaShawn piece. Oh, let me see. Well, I'm adding some metal leaf to it right now. Here it is. Oh, okay. okay. So I'm I'm putting down the metal leaf for it. Oh, look at that. But yeah, so it's gonna be okay. I like that. Huh? <laughs> So I'm going to put the metal leaf on. Uh, you I know, it would be nice if we could take all of those and put them side by side. I know, wouldn't it? The tulip ones. Oh, oh maybe uh, yeah. Poncho might be able to do that once he gets them. Poncho, did you hear that? Yeah, I did. Okay. Because once he gets all of them, if we get all the shots and everything, it, me, you know, it must be getting late because Deborah comes up with real ideas when it's late. <laughs> Just before she go to bed. <laughs> you hear this? <laughs> he I just wrong for that. I think Deborah comes up with great ideas I'm all the time. I'm just kidding. Look at Sheldon popping back in. He then popped in and popped out and popped in and popped out. That's I'm hoping I got that uh, this Wi-Fi issue fixed this time. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to keep trying. I want to be hanging out with y'all. So. You know, Sheldon, I like the fact that, you know, it doesn't matter how many times you pop off, you always pop back on. I'm coming back. <laughs> Where I want to be. Hanging with y'all. There you go. You are you are definitely not one to give up, and that's the great part. Ooh, I've heard that a thousand times after fall.
Say Frankie. I'm checking out. Yeah, this is this is definitely a soft day. Checking out. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Take it easy, Frankie. Have a good night. You too. Keep working. You know I will. So we're done. I'm happy with the results. I think it came out really good. Hopefully you can see it. I'll pull it closer to the camera. So thank you for listening today.
onto Karen. <laughs> do it. Um, so I'm going to do it right here on the floor. Relaxing out there. And I'm going to use, I'm going to do a test one. So I'm going to go grab my test one. Here, I'll turn you a little bit. I have my test one. This is a test one. It's about, it's the same paper weight as the pieces that I'm using. Um, it's pretty heavy. Paper. So we're going to get down here and I'm going to put angled down. And I know I have to use some other things. So we're angled down. And like I said, we're going to do the alcohol resist. Resisting alcohol. So I'm going to do that right there. And then I'm going to come up. So I got containers because we have to mix the color in. And so I got um, I got these containers and Poncho was like, use heavy body paint. So I got some heavy body, I got my heavy body paint as well. I think I should have got, I didn't get any, let me grab a red. So I didn't get any red. All of these are green and black. So let me grab a red. trying to do is make sure I'm getting it off the brush because it will stay on the brush. You see that? It stays on the brush. So I want to try and get that off the brush. So I'm going to keep mixing so I know it's off the brush. And keep looking at the brush and make sure it's off the brush. So I'm going to add a little more water.
you like that. I love what's going on in the media. I love that if you, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see this really nice iridescent color in there. Um, I got a really neat iridescent color happening right here. And then this is a uh, very pastel-y, which is great. Because that's the other one I put in. So it adds my, I put a lot more water in that one. So I'm going to, I can see that it's going to work. Um, I just have to figure out what color I want to use. I love this. I like what's going on in here and I love all that. And actually, I'm going to go back over this with some other stuff. You can see, look at that. It wasn't even that much blue um, from there, but look how it's already saturated. You see that? Wow. 
why um, it's going to do stuff. Just going to do stuff. It's a little darker. We're going to do a little darker here and there. So I'm just going to do stuff. Not. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what it looks like or any of that kind of stuff. I'm just going to kind of go, go with whatever. Let the color do what they want to do. That's what I'm going to do. Go along the sides, go along some edges, splash color around here and there. There we go. And now I'm going to just drop alcohol. That's what I'm going to do. So, Now, I don't have to mix up any more either. 
do I have another? So I'm just going to get started with this yellow. Oh, look how great that is. That's just beautiful. Look at that. I love this yellow. So I'm going to work fast because remember, keeping it wet is the key. Keeping it wet is the key. So we're going to work faster. So, and then now I'm going to come in with some of this red. I'm just going to splatter some red around. Splatter some red around and get to different areas. Um, with this red. And then I'm going to come in with some blue. I want to use blue. I want to use blue. And you know what happens with blue and red. Or I mean blue and green yellow, all of those. You know what blue does. I'm going to go from this one to this one. I'm just going to shoot from here. Love it. Love, 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 love. And then I'm going to drop some bigger droplets on it. Drop some bigger droplets on it. There we go. Okay, I am so loving this. I hope you are. See that bowl, Poncho? Did I see what that? Can you see that bowl? Look at nice. it. Nice. That's my homage to Poncho. Did you sand it? I did. Good. Did you do the scratch test? Oh, I didn't scratch it. It's not scratching. Do a scratch test. If it doesn't come off, you are in the game. Yeah, it's not it's not coming off. You are in the game. So I was gonna what should I coat it with? You can spray it with anything, spray any kind of clear coating. Okay. Yeah, I really like the way it turned out. I did the color and then I did the black one like you did. Cool. So I was like, my homage to Poncho. Very, very cool. What you working on, Deborah? Hold it up. Hold up what you working on, Deborah. I don't really want it. Can you see? I can see it. Very cool. Nice. It's called What Day Is This? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's right up the alley with us, huh? <laughs> I like this. I'm gonna do the other bowl. Can I see the bowl? Oh, see. Oh, we can't do it on full screen, right? Do it on full screen later. Okay, I'll do it on full screen later. Okay. okay. Thanks. Mm-hmm. 
You got anything in there, sweet? Look at you. Want something? She wants some sugar now, huh? You want something sweet, Deborah? Did you hear? I heard you. <laughs> yes, yeah. I do. It could have been. It could. It could have been a lot worse. <laughs> this is it true. Sure this is true. Oh my goodness! <laughs> the day you, you forget to turn on your mic, trust me, I've had moments. Boy, those are beautiful. I wonder who did them. The Chinese are producing everything. I will catch you guys a little later. I know it's like stiff, stiff, stiff. I'm working on a different device today. Oh, when this is over, I'm going to get my hair done. On these later on today, not later today. Out, flat, out, flat, out. I'm gonna let them dry. I'm going to think about nothing. I, yeah, I was just walking back upstairs thinking, whoo, okay, now I'm tired. I am tired. <laughs> Oh, here's the bowl. I'm going to show you the bowl, Deborah. Oh, good. Here's the bowl. Oh, 
Oh, I like that. Isn't that pretty? So that's the aftermath thing of my thing my Mm-hmm. And then I just traced, you know, I did tracing on some of it. But isn't that gorgeous? Yes, it is. Yeah, I'm gonna do another one and I'm gonna do one of the vases like this. I'm gonna do one of the vases. Okay. Yeah, I really like that. Poncho, I'm gonna show you that um the one we did yesterday. The 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 um Watercolor paper. The watercolor we did yesterday. Let's see if I can find it. I just, I have way too much stuff all over the floor. This is the one we did yesterday. Nice. All right, let me move it. Let me move out the way, will you? I know you have fun, but gee. I am. I am. I love that, Mike. Look at that. Nice. I see a face in that. Didn't that turn out really pretty? Yep. I see a face in that with the hair swinging. I out. see a woman doing another one with hair. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should send I this to one of you all, huh? No, no, no. You got it. It looks good. Look at the edges. Look what I did to the edge. Nice. Look. I did the um I did the yeah. uh pearlescent and then I did the uh alcohol on it. Very cool. Yeah, this one's right. I love uh, it. I think you got it now. You think I got it? I think you got it. <laughs> you want me to do one for you, Deborah? Uh I don't Deborah, want any more. She said we got a couple of days left. What did you say, Deborah? We only got a couple of days I don't left. Want any more art. <laughs> I know. I, I I feel the same way. It's like, don't send me anything. I'm just glad everybody got theirs out early. <laughs> well, you got one coming. Oh, so. I still think it's still gonna be a couple trickling through, but I know. I got, I'm still waiting for. Uh, I got to do two for De Deborah. I got two for Lashawn. I'm I got your. I got your five. I'm still waiting for Karen to come. And I'm done with I'm I'm gonna be done with LaShawn tonight. I'm gonna start Deborah's. And then because I'm like, okay, let me finish this one, then I'm gonna finish this one. <laughs> That's right. That's the way to do it. We got a week left, y'all. Because we gotta get them all back in the mail. That's the thing. A week left. Eight no, we days. Don't. Huh? Eight days left. Oh, we don't have to get them all back in the mail. What's that? Well, uh, once we decide what the split's going to be. So, okay. So, so we don't have to send them all back in the mail? Send all what back? The, the uh, collaborative pieces. Not, it depends. We uh -huh. all have to negotiate on those. Like Deborah oh. did five for me. Uh -huh. I'm sending her back uh, at least two or three of them. Okay. Okay. They, they did six. She said she, um, did six. she did six, so that's a three-three split. <laughs> okay. And Lashawn, in, in case you think he's the pimp, he definitely do. He's got to share his too. Okay, because Lashawn definitely sent a bunch of stuff. So, all right. So then, um, okay. I I wasn't sure. And how I got that five worked. of yours. Lord knows. Woo. What? Your five were not easy. You were you were sleepy when you did those. Oh no, those are fun. I, have I heard one she told me she told me one big one, one large one. Yeah, I, I'm still waiting one, for her big one to two, come. Actually, you have two. I sent you. So I sent. I, I didn't get her big one yet. Yeah, Poncho got a big one. He got sent his back. Did you get? Did she get your big one, Louise? Did I get a big one? Did she did you send a big one to no, her? No, she hasn't got her big one yet. Well, we got another eight days. <laughs> See, I think hers is going to get there either on Guess uh, what? Monday or Guess Tuesday. Deborah is going to jump on that thing with both feet. That thing is going to be like pow, 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 pow. I know. I know. I know. It's already laid out. It's already got colors on it. All she got to do is just pop, 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 pop. Uh, yeah, I think you're, you're going to have fun with it. I think you're going to have fun with it, Deborah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What you say? The board was like, okay. If you say so. Ooh, you guys, what I'm gonna do with you? <laughs> what you say you've done, the board? 
<laughs> I don't know what to do with you. Here's a canvas I did last night. I did a canvas last night. Oh, I like that. I like that, that canvas that I did. Yeah. yeah, I did. You know, I was playing around with some canvases last night. Whether or not okay. I'm going to put the painting on them during this quarantine will be a whole nother story. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, but we have five days. How many days we got left? Eight. Seven. Eight. <laughs> Yeah, they'll be robbing us of one, Deborah. Don't take I any. Got what I'm we got eight days. I, got what I, was say. I, can see it eight. I still no, got no. This is what I was gonna say. I'm gonna get so much energy since the last week. Yeah, so well, you gotta get ready, for that. Gotta get ready for that all nighter. You gotta get ready for the all nighter. Yeah, I've been sleeping so I can get ready. <laughs> <laughs> we got to figure out when we're going to do our all-nighter punch up. You mean all of us together? Just in and out all night long on the screen. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was that? Huh? Whose idea was that? It certainly wasn't Poncho's. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Like you don't have enough to do in your life. <laughs> I know. I know. I done already pulled the all nighter. Okay. All right. So we, can do, we can scratch that off the calendar. No, no, no. We all have to do it. We'll be like, I'm going to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's our I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, see can, we'll see who can last oh, all night. I'm pretty sure Shelton's going to hang it. Shelton's going to all Shel, Shelton can all night it. Shelton, you can all night it, Ken. Hang there. Look at Shelton. Shelton said he's going to hang in there. We're going to see. We're going we gonna to hang in there and, just, and see who gotta, drops gotta, off. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so after the first one drops off, it's not going to be Now, process some elimination. Drop off. Oh, that's nice, Sheldon. I like that. Is that a voter's one? I like that. That turned out really nice. So you hooking up those poncho pieces. Oh, look at that one. I like that. Yeah, those, like uh, the pink background. All right, Michelle. Michelle would love that. Who, who oh, you that? kicking them out, Sheldon. I, I got to get them done and get them back in the mail. Nice. Oh, I really like that one. Poncho, you oh, like that one. That, that yeah. one. that one, he's going to like working on that one. I look at Rosemary. Rosemary said it was not her idea. Oh, okay. I like those. You did a nice job, Sheldon. Cool. I don't know about this one. It's got... Uh, two heads upside down. All right, I figure he'll know what to do with it. But the other ones are almost complete, so there won't be any. No, but trust me, Poncho, Poncho will figure it out. Nice background that you're already doing. Poncho, what are you yeah, down I, there? I, eating? I, like the, uh, I love the background. I'm eating a Greek salad. Oh, I, I wouldn't mind having one of those right now. 
I'm going to get some Bantai noodles tonight. Those are really nice, Sheldon. I like those. Rosemary said the all-nighter was not her idea. Let it run. There you go. Rosemary didn't even know we were going to be doing this for 30 days. <laughs> I guess that wasn't her idea either. I went all the way from, okay, we'll do once a week to now, nah, man, we'll do it every day. <laughs> Who said that? Evidently, my partner agreed. <laughs> That's because it's like, it had to be every day. You can't do it once a week. Did you see my hat? It's 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 good. I can do it once a week. Huh? I can do it once a week. Ask me. <laughs> once a week for the rest of the year. That might be fun to do it once a week. I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. Let me put that one back. Or even once a month. Oh, nice work, Sheldon. My Kira. Kira Ann. What, you, you like my hat? I can't see. Bowl. Put it on full screen. It's the bowl. I put the oh, bowl on. Oh, put, your, put it on full screen. Oh, it's, it's, getting, it's getting late. You need a helmet. It's getting late. <laughs> A helmet seems so appropriate. Oh, that is a bad helmet. Turn it this way. See, turn it this way. It's pretty hot. I don't know. No, you look like you need to get on the shore. <laughs> okay, it's going to late in the evening and the sun is gone down, y'all. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do another yeah, one. Yeah, it's getting late. Huh? You're putting on balls and pumping with monkey. I, and I'm talking. Over there, eat. All I've had is these right here. Well, I ate. You've been nursing I ate twice. You've been nursing for seven years. I ate tomorrow. Oh, oh, oh. I had some pistachios. I had some pistachios, and then I had. Um, what was this? I had a salmon, um, a salmon, like a salmon dip uh, right here. Well, I'm going to it by now. Everybody seems to have uh, been eating. Nobody's been sharing their meals on the though. Well, I don't think, you know, oh, mine, mine, mine were just like, oh, let me eat this and let me eat that. I don't need, I don't think anybody wants to follow my meal plan. We did we did show our alcohol yesterday. <laughs> right. Everybody it was happy hour. Also everybody had a drink yesterday. All of them had a drink yesterday. They were having happy hour. Wow. Michelle had a little cocktail okay. head towards the back of hers. Mhm. Mm now I now I know the people I'm working with. <laughs> Friday night, baby. It was Friday night. Now I know. I'm gonna make sure next Friday I have my Shirley Temple over here. There you go. Ready. That's right. Don't hate, appreciate. Um, so I could be ready with my with my my drink too. All turn got to do is reach underneath the desk. I know. <laughs> Who? Karen. Karen being that cold. Karen. Karen. Uh, Karen has something to take the chill off. Oh, she has some brown <laughs> She has a. She has some special tea. Now we know why she be making all oh, the okay. cups. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I'm surprised she didn't pop back on after that one. <laughs> Karen gonna get me. Karen gonna get me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she sure enough is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna paint this. Paint this base now. I finally figured out what I want to do with this base. I'm gonna do that base like this, Ancho. My girl done went alcohol resist crazy. I like the look of this. You're welcome, dear. You're welcome too. <laughs> you sparked me into doing some casting. Casting's fun. This is starting to a comedy uh, hour. It's comedy hour, yes, because it's day twenty-three, and we all tired. <laughs> That's right. We are at the six hour mark, people. Is it time to go? Well, you know, is it a Saturday night? You can do what you want. Well, you can I'm, vote. I'm going, this is a democratic society. <laughs> <laughs> this, I think this is a democratic society again. So the board here, she up out of here. She been on all for she been doing good on the night shift. She has she, the board been holding down the night shift with us, hanging out. At first, it was just me, you, and Bill with us today. Mm -hmm. Kathleen hung out a long time too. Mm -hmm. So several people hung out. What I've noticed is, is people are hanging out later now lately. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the best time of the day for me. It is for me, too. Uh -huh. I got a lot of work yeah. to in the background today, though. I know. You was back there working. Yes, me, I was sitting up here. The only thing I did was what you all saw. <laughs> you did good. You did good. Poncho be back there closing up, closing off, and just posting his avatar. I know he be back there working. <laughs> All right, get it in where you can. I know. I'm about to get some in tonight. I'm going to get some in tonight. You got some unveiling for us, Poncho? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, oh you do those um, water polish, too. That's nice. And I did my Kathleen uh, canes. That's what I saw. You Acrylic used your paint. paint. Yeah. Your Kathleen Kane. Okay. Those turned out nice. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pancho, when I send you all of these videos, don't use them all in one day. Spread them out. Spread I want spread my videos out all the day. Over days. Put my name on I can do that. I can do that. What'd you say? What you say? Put your name on. <laughs> Deborah, name name on name on Deborah hasn't submitted one video. <laughs> no, no, no. She her it's video hard. was the uh, interview. <laughs> yeah. <That was>, <laughs> So no, I, got, I still got. I have a. I have quite a few still in my phone. Uh, my uh, what you call it? I got to send you. All you have I to do food. is, when I come on at night, that'll be my video, right? <laughs> That's how I see it too, Deborah. We don't really need video because we come on. Yep, that's the way folks can uh, roll. Mm -hmm. Don't bother Works me. Works out for me. Works out for me too. 
The board's like, I, I do have a video. Isn't this being recorded? Just enough content to make it swing. <laughs> Did you hear that, the board? What? Say it again. I said, the board is saying, I do have a video. Isn't this being recorded? <laughs> <laughs> well, her, her wish came true. <laughs> well, y'all, it's about the six hour point on Saturday night. We're going to get ready to close I'm things. I'm so proud of y'all. What to say? I'm proud of everybody. I think I plan on great. having a pretty aggressive Sunday tomorrow. Oh, really? Why all of y'all? Look, I'm a party. I was I'm trying to have a more of a laid back Sunday. Yeah, in case you know, I, I'm I'm gonna get some stuff done while y'all in church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who are you talking to? <laughs> I was, I, was I, I provided that that delayed reaction. Only person on this screen going to church tomorrow is gonna to be Louise. What? Come so on. I, I get I get I get two or three pieces done while she in church. <laughs> I don't think she get out to about 7 30 in the evening. We get I excuse me, let me just tell you this. I you know what? I we used to live in church, but uh I go to church with my husband now. So that means what? You stay longer or shorter? We stay as church is an hour. Oh, that's that's good. That only gives me time to finish two pieces. At church is an <laughs> hour. It took me some. It took me. I had to get used to that. <laughs> well, I grew, I, grew, I, grew, I grew up. In, I grew up in all day church. Uh, We're going to get ready to sign off so Louise can go spend her hour in church tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye, Deborah. Oh, Carol yeah. said good night, y'all. I'll pick up a bottle of Marlowe for Friday night show. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Be ready for Friday. That's our that's our uh happy let hour. Our, let our hair down day. That's we also doing our sale Friday too. So it'll be right after. Sale Friday. All right, y'all. Well, until tomorrow. Are busy. All right, what'd you say tomorrow? Close this down. I will see you, ladies. In see the you, Shelton. Gym. Take care, Sheldon. Have a good night, brother. Sheldon going to stay on. He going. He's going to be the night shift for the twenty-four hour show. I know. Sheldon going to be holding it down. He's going to be the one to outlast all of us. All right, y'all. Take it easy. Uh